friends, welcome back everyone, welcome back to another week, another edition of the Sparkling Tuna Cup number 38. It's been a long time coming, as we did put our events on a bit of a hiatus over the past couple of weeks because of ESL Masters and the ESL Masters qualifiers and the B stream and the main event and... There was, there was a lot. There was a lot going on. So it's been a hot minute. Been a while since we've had our events. But yesterday we had GPO, Grand Platypus Open. And today we have Sparkling Tuna Cup. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Hecate, we have the Ukrainian Protoss player. The blue, sorry, the red Protoss representing CSO Esports. It is Rostock. And spawning in the top right-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have... I, uh, I, I should have jumped, double checked. <laughs> I believe the American Terran. Uh, one moment here as I quickly just confirm that before uh, saying the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. The Canadian. There we go. The Canadian Terran player. It is Spiffy B. There we go. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, a special shout-out here to Spiffy B as well. I believe it is his debut, his first time competing in the Sparkling Tuna Cup. And not just that, um, well, I mean, first time competing. And a big reason for that is because it is 4 a.m. I believe uh, he did say it was 4 a.m. over in the land of Canada where he is. And I always appreciate it. I always appreciate the passion here when it comes to the NA players. Um, this event, the Sparkling Tuna Cup, is catered a little bit more for the European and the Southeast Asian time zone, less so North American. So whenever we get like a North American player or a Latin American player, always a lot of love, always a lot of respect as well to stay up to ruin your sleep schedules to play in our events. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we do have other events like the Tenacious Turtle Tussle, which is more friendly for the NA region, um, as that's what's it, what it's intended for. Um, but Sparkling Tuna Cup, this event is open to all. It is open to all regions, all shapes, all sizes, wherever you happen to be. The Tuna Cup will accept you. So that's also why, again, I, I appreciate it. The, despite the bad time zone, despite the, the bad time slots, we get, we get a Canadian player. Much love. Much love. Ooh, as we're getting into our openers here, and so far we do have a Rax Expand economic opener at a Spiffy B. Meanwhile, Rostock back at home going for a gate. Cyber Expand himself. So everything is looking normal for the normal here in the early game um but i'm sure everything will change once we get into the mid game here again rostock is coming in as one of the favorites here of the entire tournament is of course one of the best protos in ukraine and we'll see how we're able to keep up here um again we do have quite a decent amount of ukrainian representation typically here we get rostock we get gref we get night phoenix as well uh for now a lot of those players are absent i mentioned before as reaper does slip in and is looking to get a scout of the tech here reaper does barely make it past into the main base does get eyes barely on the twilight council before going down hopefully spiffy b was able to click on it just in time to recognize what kind of build we're up against behind this gases are being taken expansions getting up and running and we are going for a factory a safety cyclone here in the early game not too bad has been quite popular in recent times has been quite popular here uh, as we do get <laughs> as we do get into the swing of things and uh yeah i was just kind of trying to get at the fact that um today we do have oh my no the, the earth said i <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have um, a little bit of a lighter sign up uh, as well exclamation mark B in the chat We'll have a look at the packet together later on But I'm sure a big reason for that is because we were on a hiatus not just that but also uh, There was daylight savings in Europe So it's one hour earlier than normal on top of that uh, for the Europeans at least and um, on top of that uh, Also ESL Masters ESL Masters is still ongoing So there's still players that are competing in that which of course wouldn't want to compete in the online weeklies that not so close to their you know, playoff days so uh yeah i do understand the low signups this week but i'm sure we'll, we'll get him back we'll get him back in the coming weeks i do want to believe as one adept goes down the other will escape two scvs go down alongside some loss alongside some lost mining time here so not bad from rostock getting quite a lot done back at home it's going to be a two gate blink opener into a third base very economic it's blink yes but only two gateways we're really only just securing ourselves here on our uh, for our economy and we're getting a much faster third so a very very standard build a very economic build here from rustock as a result he's going to be giving spiffy b a lot of breathing room a lot of time to himself here to try to set settle himself into the mid game without too much issue and we get to see what he's made of 
we get to see what Spiffy B can bring to the table. For now, additional Raxes are on the way. It's going to be a 3-1-1 setup. Pretty standard setup here on two bases. Really, I'm looking to see where we go from here. It looks like a mind drop is under the works. Another winner, sorry, another medevac on the way as well. As two winner mines are going to be sent out as they get sent out. Here come the stalkers here on the front lines. Could be threatening a dive into the natural base. Marines are getting picked off one after the other. Oh my god, three Marines already. Boys being pulled preemptively here to repair to keep this bunker up and running. Remember, it's only a two-gate opener, so these stalkers are just designed to pressure. They're not designed to really kill or really push into any of these bases. Of course, Spiffy B is still in the dark. The, the mind drop is going to give him a little bit more scouting information. A little bit. As we do have high ground vision, Rostock, he can blink into the main base. He's getting a little bit adventurous, but he does dive in. He is looking to deny, delay even the third CC. At the same time, in comes the mind drop. No reaction. Ooh. Ten workers do go down, but at the same time, SCVs are also falling. This was an insane amount of damage to get ten workers and to save the water mines. Really nice mind drop. But I can't say the same about his defenses back at home because that is 11 SCVs going down. This tank is late. It finally does come up, but we hug the tank. No. We hug the tank. The tank goes down. Repairs are too little too late. And are we going to even force a cancel? Not quite, but Marines are still getting picked off. Finally, we get this back up and run. We scan. We see the observer. The observer. Ah, oh, can we get it? We will. We can. Observer goes down. And even though Rostov did take a lot of damage, is looking fine across the map here because he was able to deal so much in the counterattack. 14, 15 SCVs in total. A tank, a delay on the CC. Even more lost mining time. And now Smithy is in a really rough place. Now he is going for another drop into the main. But Stalkers this time are in position. And this time Rostock is paying attention. Boys are being pulled. The Widow Mines are going to get cleaned up. The Medivac itself also under fire. We have a blink and we do take down the Medivac in the end. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, and things are looking a little bit dire here for Spiffy B. I think he's going to be able to hit his stim timing. That is true, but his tank count has been hindered because of his dead workers. He doesn't have the economy to sustain tank production here as he has very limited gas available. Oh, yeah, it's uh, we, we got to commit. We just got to send it. We still have the third CC on the way. So to be fair, we can still try and get back into this economically. But Spiffy B, he's down to 39 SCVs. Every single stim hurts as well. We have a fourth base on the way. Rostock looking to pop up. And we scan up the ramp. We see a Colossus charge. Let's waiting for him here. And we can't push into this. We're going to try, but we just cannot. Not here. Not anymore. We dive on forward. We take down one of the Medivacs. And we're going to take down the second Medivac as well with a blink. Ooh, just barely. Again, behind this, Rostock just really settling into his economy. Second Colossus is on the way. We're pushing across the map. What do we have to defend? We have no tanks, no bunkers. We have Marines. Ah, but they're so fragile. The man with gun, not like this, will be forced all the way back into the natural base. A couple of marauders are coming out as well. The Zelts are just having their way with this army. Force field is thrown down. GG gets called, and Rostock will take game number one. GG. A solid game there out of Ross. I mean, I say a solid game. There was, of course, a really good moment where the mind drop came in. You know, that was a, a big win for Spiffy B. But unfortunately, uh, he just wasn't in position in his main base. He didn't have a tank at the time. The tank was delayed. It did take note of that. Uh, tank was delayed. Uh, just wasn't in position for a blink into the main. That was something he was woefully underprepared for. He was hoping for maybe a push towards the natural. Not ready for anything in the main base. And things very quickly snowballed out of control. And with that, Rostock does take the first game. It's a best of three. We can, of course, come back. We can pull off a miracle comeback here and even force the ace match. That's personally what I want. But it's up to our players. It is up to Spiffy B. Let's go. As we get into this, uh, good, oh, good morning. Good, oh, a special shout out to everyone in the chat, of course, as well. Uh, Werehog, our first quacker. Uh, quack. quack or, or wolf. If you understand that a little bit better, uh, I see Itri in the chat. Uh, Sound of Babyling, uh, Maro Marauder. <laughs> it's Marauder, but may maybe a little bit feline. I, I appreciate it. Um, complete noob in the chat as well. Oh, complete, complete, Fabi, complete. Uh, Psychons as well. Welcome, welcome. Hope everyone is enjoying this. Was ARJ Skater. It's been a while, Fabi. It's been a while. But here we go. We're getting into game two and spawning in the top left-hand corner of Site Delta. We have our Ukrainian Protoss representing CSO Esports. It is Rostov. 
and spawning in the bottom right hand corner we have his opponent we have the canadian terran representing himself and also Oliveira. Uh, <laughs> it is spiffy b we go again a bit of a rougher start here uh in the previous game number one but we'll see if we can really just get into the swing of things here in game number two i think what's most worrisome about game one is that rostock wasn't really aggressive if you remember he went for a two gate blink into a third base he didn't really have too many stalkers you know he didn't rush into a warp prism to reinforce across the map no he was just applying some light pressure and he was able to deal a devastating amount of damage and that is worrisome especially if rostock does decide to throw down more than two gates I'm talking three maybe even four gateways on two bases and mate rostock well, he can he can pop up oh meanwhile hello there yes if he's moving up we do go for a double gas opener instead of a wreck expand so we can go for a proxy and there it is right next to our lovely tuna tony the tuna i don't know what his name is i don't is it tony i don't <laughs> don't Do won the tuna uh we have our second racks so it is going to be a two racks opener uh reactor back at home interesting choice here okay so really curious to see how this does turn out no rostock is checking he's checking up the ramp he's probably reading a proxy stargate and he does come across the racks here at the tuna location not like this as the scv is going to go down this racks will not complete because we went reactor first there is no way to save this there is no reaper there's no marine there is nothing and do we send out another SCB? We do not. That is a cancel. As a cancel here on the proxy, back at home, factory is throwing down second racks as well. Because we, don't th we throw down the second racks, this is looking like a one base all in. One base all in out of Spiffy B. We are not expanding, not anymore. It's all or nothing for the Terran. Back at home, Rostock, he's just going to be chilling throwing down his shield batteries uh soon to throw down his tech as well behind the mineral line looking like a twilight council once again um stargate isn't out of the question but because it's so far back here it should be a twilight council from our protoss so far shield batteries are being thrown down stalkers are getting in position our tech of choice we have up oh. We're, we're, we're getting there <laughs> once we get the resources for it once we get the gas for it uh as back at home it is going to be a 2-1-1. I'm imagining, yep, there we go. Starport on the way. No natural base. We mentioned before that this was going to be an all-in. And good read here out of Rostock. He hasn't seen much, I'll be honest. Hasn't seen much at all, but he's going for a Robo first. A Robo opener. Not a Twilight Council, not a Stargate. Now, what does this mean? This is very defensive. With a fast Robo, you can get into fast Immortal production. You can get into fast Colossus as well. The downside of this opener, this build from Rostock, is you lack map control. You don't get Blink Stalkers. You don't get uh, Phoenixes, which means you can't really shut down drops. But you can shut down ground-based pushes. And here we go. Reapers, they dive into the main base. Four Reapers in total. We're going to get some probes. One probe goes down. Ah, so far only one worker here. The Sim City's too good. The Reapers, they can't get in. Oh my god, they're trapped. There's no way out, and every single Reaper goes down. The Sim City here for Rostock just reading Spiffy B like a book. Ah, uh, and every Reaper went down for one probe. So I have to correct myself. I said probes are gonna be going down. No, no. Pr probe is going down. Feels a bad man. Oh, has Rostock shut Sp Spiffy B down? Meanwhile, we're going for a late... Oh, this is such a late expansion. CC here at the natural base after the 2-1-1 setup. And this is still committed. This may not be all in anymore, but it's pretty much all in. Like, this has to deal damage. The Stalkers, they come in. Blink is not done. They get one Cyclone. But this drop, this stim timing needs to get damage done. If it doesn't, then Spiffy B will just be behind and stay behind and... It will be an insanely hard trek here up the hill that he has kind of dug himself in. As uh, here we go, the drop is moving out. Meanwhile, we were talking about the defensive advantage here of going for a robot opener. We already have one immortal. We have the bay on the way soon. Fast Colossus. Here we go, the drop is making its way towards the third base. We do come across a probe, and we can potentially delay the third, but I don't think we really care about the third. We want to go straight to the main. Nope, never mind. <laughs> we will be looking to shut down that worker. We go straight for the pylon as well. As the medevac drop is going to get the hell out of here. Oh. 
Yes, yeah, Stalker's coming in from every which angle, and this drop is going to be able to unload, but we can focus down the medevac. Everything will fall. Uh, and that is what we were working up towards, that we were building up towards. Observer comes in. Finally, we get our expansion here on the low ground, but as Speefy B is taking his natural base, we have Rostov taking his third. We already have, I believe... Uh, yeah, we already have one Colossus. We have a second Colossus on the way. Extend Thormal Lance in production as well. Rostov just getting into his build here. Now, again, as we mentioned, because there's no Twilight Council and no Stargate, like, this this army is lacking in maneuverability. It's not very versatile, but we're getting there. There it is. Do you have a Twilight Council on the way? This should be for either Blink or Charge. I would assume Blink here to catch up and to be able to, again, be more flexible and keep up with drop play from the opponent. Spiffy B is pushing out. Got a Cyclone, Marauder, a couple of Marines as well. Doing everything we can here to, to get some, to find some damage even. Rostock though, waiting with his two Colossi. Ay, ay, ay. And we just do not have much left. We get eyes on the army, and this is go time for Rostock. Extend the Malance is about to kick in. Cyclone so will force Biffy B. He's gonna get the hell out of here. Back at home, he's building up his tank count. Still being active with his drops. Again, there is no blink. We're going straight for charge, not blink. So we're gonna have a very powerful ground-based army. And what this tells me is that Rostock, he wants to dive. This tells me he wants to dive. He wants to potentially push into this natural as well. To say that two forges are thrown down. Drop comes into the throw base. Probes are falling. The Colossi are in position. Matterback drop gonna be forced out into the dead space. And again, because there's no blink and there's no anti-air, like the Matterbacks are gonna be able to live. They're gonna be able to stay here for quite some time and come back in uh, whenever they see an opportune moment. So, uh, not quite yet, but soon. This Rostock is pushing. Now, back at home, there is no, there is a wall that's soon to be upon us. No bunker, but we do fully wall off. We have a couple of Vikings. We got a tank. We got a third CC on the way. Smithy B, you know, he's he's thinking further ahead. He's looking to try to macro out of this. And Rostock does pull back. Oh. <laughs> Rostock does pull back, and Smithy B are uh, losing confidence there, and... It was a dire position. He's like, mate, I can't, I can't fight against this. <laughs> oh, I don't blame him. GG, well played. I, I understand, I understand. And Rostock will be taking the series two to zero, advancing on to the next round. GG. I can understand. It can be very, uh, it can be very demotivating having a start to the game like that. Um, Spiffy B, like, he was, he started with a proxy, went into a one base all in, looked to expand, and, uh, again, from the failed proxy, essentially, and from the decision to go for one base all in, he was behind, and the all in didn't really come into, uh, come into play, did not do enough damage, did not snowball the way that I'm sure Spiffy B wanted it to, and just like that, Rostock will take the series, but as I mentioned before, a big shout out to Spiffy B as well, because, hey, you know, um, a very rare sight to see a player from North America compete in our events, doesn't happen too often, every, every, like, couple of months, you know, every, every, like, 10 weeklies, uh, we get, like, a trigger or something signing up, uh, if that, so, yeah, I appreciate it, I appreciate it, B big shout out to Spiffy B, much love, much love, and, with that, Rostock will advance on. He will advance into the next round. And I am going to be hopping servers because we have our next matchup. Oh, let's get ready for it. <laughs> so, uh, again, exclamation might be in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the brackets. I will quickly switch our scenes over once we switch our regions. Oh, there we go. As to quickly hop on over. Ha, mess with the players. Here we go. So from the top. Oh, I should actually move this over. From the top. So we have six players here tonight. Six players. I did mention before that again, um, our tournament is 
tournaments is a little bit early and uh, we have been on a hiatus for a little bit, so I'm sure we've uh, a lot of the players that are usually our regulars have kind of forgotten about this event just because it's been a couple of weeks. So a little bit, a, a little bit, a little bit upsetting. But regardless, four players, we have a double elimination bracket, and we are gonna still be covering this as best we can. So we have four players. We have Oriana, of course, the Chinese Terran player. We have Demi as well, returning from yesterday. For those of you that were here yesterday, Demi did end up forfeiting in Grand Platypus Open because of technical issues. Um, honestly, Demi versus Oriana is a really good series, but I was a little bit concerned that those technical issues may pop up again. Um, so I was very hesitant about jumping on that series. So I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll let them sort themselves out. And if they play out, then they play out. If they don't, then... You know, I, I want to keep the show going. So we started off with Rostock versus PFB instead. And we're leading into our next round of players. We have Minovik, the, of course, Protoss player in the upper half of the bracket. And we have Eva, uh, the English Zerg player in the lower portion of the bracket as well. So we do have our players, our more higher tier players now starting to juke it out here. And again... Much love, much love to Spiffy B. Best of luck. It is double elimination um, because of the lower signups. We do have a rule that if we do have less than, I think it's less than 10, less than 10 signups, uh, then we do have double elimination. We haven't had double lim in Sparkling Tunic Cup in a long time, if not ever. Uh, usually this is a more populated tournament, but, uh, you know, we do have this contingency plan just to make sure that uh, the event isn't uh, too too fast, that the event, does, the event doesn't end too quickly. So we do have yeah, quite a lot of matches ahead of us. Quite a lot to go. Go. Just setting some things up and making sure that everything is as it should be. So uh, we're just gonna be catching up. Just gonna be catching up here in the chat. I gotta start signing up for these. I mean, it's open to all. Pl it's open to everyone. Open to all regions. You know, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, bronze or gold or silver or diamond or masters or GM. You can of course sign up if you wish. If you want to be a part of this, um, of course, not pressuring you to. But you know, it's, it's it's there if you're interested. If you are interested, we've actually had Soundo sign up for a couple of our uh, tenacious turtle tussles, which is. Which has been a little bit, which has been fun. It's been fun seeing Sando against some of these big names. Um, I'm sure he's been enjoying himself as well. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, for now, though, it looks like we're going to be going on a short break. Our players, they need a little bit of time, both Rostock and Eba. Uh, it's all good. We, we are more than willing to give them that time. So we're going to be going on a short break. Uh, when we return, we will have Eba versus Rostock. Coming up next, a ZVP. <laughs> See you soon. Until then. Enjoy some of these duck teams. Enjoy. Huh. Should we go in Spanish this one? <laughs> Do it. Do it. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. All right. I don't know if I can do this. All right. Let's try. Um, aquí en esta esquina de la mapa es un Terran player. Es rojo. Es rojo. Y a la izquierda. Ooh. I think I don't know my directions as perfectly, yeah. but I believe it's a skater. Yeah. yeah. A la izquierda, este uh, jugador es verde y es un teren y es el final map si puede ganar. Yo creo. <laughs> es Boga! <laughs> y juntos, ¿qué son? Y, y, y juntos son los antimancos. <laughs> get it, get it. That, was, that was better than what I could have done. Um, it was better than what I expected. En el sud. No, no, no. no uh, en el derecho. Izquierda, dere no, yeah, derecho, derecho. Aquí, aquí en la mapa, en la esquina, tenemos el azul Terran, tenemos Marea y su. su. What's his teammate? Um, um.
Eh, su, 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 su compadre, su amigo, su enamorada, no sé qué es, pero... Aquí tenemos, aquí tenemos el protos, es azul, es Derky y juntos, juntos son el equipo... Uh, uh, lo, los lamas, los lamas. Los lamas. How do you say llama in Spanish? Llama, llama, yeah. Maybe. I right? Just llama? Yeah. I don't know either. I completely <laughs> skipped trying to go for north or south. That was that was going to be an impossible one for me. Quack. Coming live from the Plaga de Cuto Beach on the Isles of Pine, from the Lagoy part of Bintan Island, from Karagandi in Kazakhstan. We are here with the 29th edition of ESL Pro Tour Open Cup Asia Division. I am your host, Yaku of the Zaku, and with me today I have La Pastora, que es el La Pastora, que es el chica, a la pasta. And welcome back. Hello. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. I apologize for cutting that duct tape short, but we have our players, and they are both raring and ready to go as we dive into the upper semifinals. The upper bracket semifinals, and here we go, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Hardled. We have the Ukrainian Protoss player representing CSO Esports. It is Rostock. And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. Let's go, Eva versus Rostock, and again, uh, Rostock, of course, has been warming up here through Spiffy B. Spiffy B, again, big shout out for uh, competing and being a part of this event. Um, more of a, more on the amateur side of players compared to some of the other big names that we have here, but this is where the big names are starting to face off. Players like Eva, players like Rostock, players like Demi, Midovik, Oriana, they are all looking to juke it out, and... Oh boy, we'll see who comes out on top here. So far, going to be a hatch first from Eva. Nothing too wild for the time being. Uh, we have... Let's see we have. <laughs> An emote through. Now, it's going to be a hatch gas pool. We have seen we have seen Eva at times be very fond of 15-15 variations. Um, and very aggressive or even greedy variations at that. But that is not going to be the case here. Not at least in game number one. I'm sure we are going to be willing to do so in future games to mix things up and spice things up here against Rostock. Likewise, I'm curious how Rostock plays this out as well. We have been having the luxury of casting him a couple of times throughout the past couple of weeks, the past couple of months, and he does come off as more of an aggressive player. Not as aggressive, not as, uh, not as aggressive as Gref. Uh, Gref, of course, is very cheesy. <laughs> very cheesy Ukrainian Protoss. Uh, Rostock, he's a little bit more mid-game oriented. At least that's the impression that I've gotten so far. We'll see if that continues to be the case. As the probe is diving into the main, is going to be oh, the probe. Sorry, as the Overlord is going to be checking the natural base, uh, probe coming back into the main. I know why. I, I just woke up. Okay, I, <laughs> I had a nap after the stream this morning, and, and I'm still I'm still gathering my bearings. Uh, but even just confirming the opener of the gate expanded to the cyber core, not too crazy. We have our tech of choice, and it is going to be a Stargate opener here out of Rostock. This will be to get a secure three base setup here. And we'll see where we go from there. If we go Oracle first, Void Ray instead, and what kind of tech we throw down, we throw down after the third base. Meanwhile, Eva back at home, just running, taking his third. Pulling out of gas once he gets the speed. Everything is looking as it should. We, we should be getting into additional queen production momentarily as well. Spreading all of that creep. And getting into the swing of things. As the adept is going to be threatening a shade. So far, so good. It is going to be that oracle first. Two links do manage to slip into the main base, and we want that pro. Up. Oh! oh, we do barely get one probe. One probe for two links. I, I mean, pretty good trade overall. But at the same time, the adept does make it into the mineral line. One drone goes down. We're going to get a second drone as well. 
a good amount of damage dealt here by this adept thankfully evil was able to reciprocate that damage and get a full scout as well is aware of the oracle zooming across the map and are we ready for it we have two queens in the natural we have one queen in the main but soon to be two in a couple of seconds they will come out in time we even have a spore just in case just to keep this natural base as secure as possible oracle is forced back does get eyes on the third base now this is a very suspect third as well we did opt to go for the triangular third this is designed to spread creep and to launch creep across the map for a ground based push doesn't have to be but this is i'm sure on the back of rossock's mind based on the base location and we'll see how aggressive eba does intend on being Ooh, as we have a void ray follow-up actually third base is being taken adept is getting in position the void ray i believe is going to be rallied towards that third oracles they do bypass the queens get into the mineral line two more droids go down so far a bit of hole damage but good trades here for rostock not losing anything just a bit of hole damage for two extra drones as spores are finishing up third base slowly getting up and running as well and we have that twilight council follow-up okay so a couple of things one the void ray does kind of throw us for a loop a little bit here with this twilight council this could be glaives um there's no forge we're throwing down additional gateways as well the void ray is designed to shut down the solo to keep eba in the dark and this should be glaives it could also be a blink all in as well hero has been quite fond of it the adepts they get around it, but they get three more workers oh the workers they try to find some more drone damage they force lost mine time here at the natural base quick reaction out of eba does pull back in time oh but the oracles they come back in we get another three ah another six in total but that is one oracle going down a bit of a rough trade there for rostock but all in all one oracle for 10 workers pretty good amount of damage and there's that follow-up it is gonna be blink we do have a delayed forge here from rostock um, but a forge nonetheless, so it is going to be plus one blink a standard follow-up here to get into the mid game This is what I mentioned earlier that I do feel like Rostock does thrive in the mid game and I mean he's getting there Meanwhile Eba spreading his creep through the center of the map working on an Evo chamber fourth base is being taken So far we haven't really committed to our tech yet. We do have a roach warrant, but um, we haven't got into roach speed plus one melee is on the way The roach warrant could just be for safety and we could be looking to take up into hydras instead what does go down oh my god we catch another three drones here at the third base this is slowly adding up it's slowly getting out of control behind this again still no road there we go <laughs> i do think that was a bit of an oversight i'm pretty sure eva had plenty of resources to start up road speed so this is delayed uh bailey nest is on the way behind this so it's going to be ling bane road traveler pretty standard army composition i was going to start talking about hydras like the longer this game went on without speed um the more likely i was thinking we could go into hydras but nah, nah, it's all good it is just going to be ling bane road traveler behind this rostock is warping in a wave of units but he's not committing here he may push out he may vie for map control but i'm pretty sure rostock intends to take a fourth base because he's throwing down a robo a, sorry a second robo robotics bay double colossus production it's coming out and as rostock moves out eba ooh, was threatening a counterattack but now he's coming back in he's turning back around coming in from behind looking to dive on top of this army does manage to get us around just barely the oracles are going ham but the stalkers are going to be surrounded oh they barely will escape so many of them are so low barely any shields <laughs> they're going to get cornered and these stalkers are going to go down the plus one made all oh, the positioning oh my god the blinks every stalker will still fall and that was expensive that took a lot of links but that was only minerals minerals for gas a better trade for eva meanwhile remember how i was talking about how the likelihood of hydras being a little bit higher there it is hydrogen is done lurker den is on the way the lunkers are upon us as we don't just throw down the lurker den we have a hive in production eva already up to 71 workers meanwhile rostock taking up into colossus as well eva did he scout by the way he didn't even scout but he is recognizing that rostock is going for a more heavily or oh, more tech heavy composition so as rostock works towards colossus eba's working towards lurkers eba will be able to have a better army as a result thankfully not sticking around too long on ling bane road ravager so overlords are falling we do have roaches but this is mainly for defense mainly to make sure we just don't die suddenly to an attack 
as our tech is done. Hive had that to finish up to get into the lurker upgrades and adrenal glands. Hydras are in production. And show us those upgrades. We're actually going to be prioritizing Vipers first. A very mature decision here. Vipers then into, of course, lurker range. And those roaches, we need to get rid of them. They're going for a bit of a run by it. Nine workers do 10 even. Oh my god, the target firing. 10 workers go down before being cleaned up at the same time. Here comes Rostock. We just threw away some roaches. The lurkers in already. Oh, this is a rough timing here for Eba. He's in a lot of trouble. He needs to buy time. Roaches are coming out. Vipers, they don't have the energy yet, but it looks like Rostock doesn't have enough. He can't keep pushing. He's trying. He's waiting for another warp in. But as he waited for that warp in, the lurkers have arrived. Just in time. There is detection. Good force fields here out of Rostock. The army coming in from the right-hand side. They try to dive on top of the Colossus. One of them is saved, but the other gets yoinked, and the two Colossi go down. Rostock unable to save more of them. His army, though, breaking through. Oh, my God. That's a lot of roaches going down. Three lurkers remain. The Vipers, they're not ready. Limited anti-air as well. The roaches are falling one after the other. Can we get on top of the lurkers? We do get one. Almost. We barely do not. Eba barely holding on here. By the skin of his teeth, he pushes back the Colossus army. And he holds. Keeps his vipers alive. Preserves four of these lurkers as well. Rostock is going to rotate around. And he's getting into immortal production. Upon recognizing that there are too many lurkers, immortals, they do a great job of breaking through. And this tech path, oh, so we do have a roach counter tech at the same time. I was about to say that this tech, this tech path from Rostock tells us that he doesn't want to go skydol. So he wants to be hyper aggressive, be in the face of Eba as long as he can. He had a choice, either to tech up into Archons and Immortals or try to go into Skytoss. And he's committing here to the Grand Army. Oof. Taking some spines to the face. You can see the Lurker count getting higher and higher here for Eba. What are we up to? 10 Lurkers. We're up to 82 Workers. 4 base saturation. Soon to be working on a 5th. And Rostock, he's just behind tech-wise. Like, there was a window. The window there for, for Rostock was to kill Eba before he got his Lurkers up. And he just barely missed that timing by a couple of seconds. Another big rich counterattack. Getting on top of the would-be 5th base. The entire army turning back around. Roaches shouldn't get too much done here, but they will be they will force a cancel. No! That was a kill, not a cancel. 400 minerals down the drain at the same time. Here comes the stalker army. We have detection. We get one lurker. The base. We get the fifth. Oh my. Sorry, we get the fourth even. That's pretty good. <laughs> We snipe the fourth base. We don't bleed out too many stalkers either. It's going to be four stalkers going down. We killed four lurkers at a hatchery. Hey, that was a pretty good trade here for Rostock. He's not taking this lying down. Storm is about to finish. It's not done yet. We still need another good 15, 20 seconds on that. Here we go. We're pushing in. Lurkers are getting in position. Big spine shot's going to be going off on the zealots. But I tell you, no. We need to save them. Oh, they barely do survive. Three more seconds and Storm is done, but these High Templar, they took a beating. At the same time, Prism tries to go into the main, but the Queens are in position. How many Lurkers do we have? We are up to 13, soon to be 15. Oh no! Oh my god. Once again, Rostock just playing with fire right now. It loses one of his High Templar. Decent Storm on the Vipers even. Oh my god. Takes, the Storm takes down a Viper. Good moment, but we're looking for the Yoinks, and we do get the last Colossus. Yeah, High Templar, they go down. Big storms here on the Hydras. Rostock is pushing through, but the Lurkers, the Lurkers, Poppy, they're just too many. Pushing into all these Lurkers, it's just not possible. Uh, we're going to try to fight our way through, but the Immortal goes out of the Arcade as well. At the same time, we do have some Zealot Rumbys, and the Zealots aren't getting damage done. But we lost everything. We lost every single High Templar, Archon, Immortal, and Colossus. Only Gateway Unit survived. And the Lurkers are still thriving. They are still up and running. Or Scudley. Wadley? Yeah. Oh 
with that Russell. He has to rebuild here from scratch. Eba getting his fifth up and running as well. I did lose a lot of workers and he's yet to rebuild them. But there we go. Seven drones are on the way. More lurkers in production as well. Uh, have we rebuilt the, hi the Vipers? We have. There's two Vipers with the main army. Oh, oh my god, the feedback's on point. Rostock doing well here, getting some feedback stuff, storming the main army as well. Prism slips into the main base. The queens are out of position. Prism will go down, but the warp in does complete. Zell's a bust into the main. Lurker is not quite where they need to be. Oh my god, 14, 17, 25. Oh my god, Zealot's coming in from every single angle in the main at the fifth and at the fourth. 33 drones go down and counting. Ah, do we get 36? 37? Oh my god, I was joking. 38. 38 drones. The economy of Eba is just in shambles. There's almost nothing left. We're down to 48 workers. Eba was doing so well. He, un unironically, he was doing really well this game. He was keeping up. He was out positioning. He was taking some really good fights, having a better economy. And in one swift move, the Zealous just eviscerated the Mineral Lions. Eba still has a strong army, but no longer an economy. Oh my God, Storm going down. That base is going to be falling as well. These, uh, these Immortals are overextending, but they all survive. The immortals, they get the hell out of there. Oh, the Lurker Spines. Getting a lot of damage done, but we recall back home. Meanwhile, across the map, this base is going to fall as well. Oh, no. One more Spine. Uh, the Lurkers go down, and they do not get a kill of this 5 HP. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, we're coming back for it, though. We want it. We're going to get it. There it is. It's a kill on the base. Uh, but we're coming in first round. We have detection, and it looks like Rostock is gonna clean up. He collapses on the army. GG gets called, and Rostock will take game number one. Whew. GG. GG, well played again. Eba, he was doing so well for himself, taking up into Lurkers, into Hydra Lurker Viper, taking some good fights, some good trades, um, even able to yeah have a solid economy behind it but in one swift move remember he had queens in position in the main they did actually go to inject it looked like uh they were moving out to either inject or spread creep warpin came in and just like that evil was pulled apart we had the warpin in the main zealot run by on the right hand side main army towards the left and yeah that was 38 dead workers 38 dead drones and just like that evil was all in did not have an economy behind it could not sustain himself it was all or nothing and the end it was oh. okay i was like what is it? i was like what 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 is it? okay <laughs> it's like what is this thing on the camera it's it's my arm poppy it's my arm <laughs> uh but in the end rostock was able to persevere and take game number one and with that rostock is one game away from advancing on into the next round eva is up against the wall it's a best of three one more loss and he is knocked down to the lower bracket Greetings from Spain. Enjoying your perfect... Ah, oh, perfect. Ah, oh, gracias, papi, gracias. Bienvenidos, papi, bienvenidos. Ojalá que todo te va bien. Soy de Latinoamérica, de Perú, no de España. Ah. Oh. Here we go. Petition for the Spanish Idra to return. I know, it's been a while, papi. It's been a while. Catching up. I am the TTT. Ooh. Sorry, just catching up with the chat. I haven't played competitive StarCraft in like three to four years. Ah, you're fine, Bob. You're fine. All good. All good in the hood. So we're getting ready here. Uh, looks like our players, they just needed a moment. They needed a moment. Uh, 
to just settle on into this. Uh, it looks like Eba just, I may have had some latency issues, so he just had to restart. Just had to restart his client and come back into this, and hopefully that does resolve any issues for our players. And uh, then we can get into the rest of the series. Meanwhile, we have a couple of other updates as well that are currently ongoing. Looks like Demi did take down Oriana 2-0. Demi currently facing off against Mindel VK in the upper semifinals. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of where this is all going to be leading. The winner of this series will be facing off against the winner of Mindel VK and Demi in the upper bracket finals. Here we go. Of course, both Oriana and Spiffy B are waiting in the lower bracket of the losers of these very series. They are lying in wait. Of course, the lower bracket is another chance for the players, but it's a brutal chance as well. Best of ones. Best of ones in that lower bracket. Not, uh, not going to be easy to make it through. Anything can happen. Upsets can occur. Upsets can and will occur, I should say. We are getting into game number two and spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Oceanborn. We have the Ukrainian Protoss player, the red Protoss representing CSO Esports. It is Rostock. Uh -huh. <laughs> and spawning in the top left hand corner, being a little bit cheeky. There we go, going for the 12 pool. We have the English Zerg player, the blue Zerg representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. here in that second game now a 12 full doesn't have to be all in and i'm assuming that this isn't going to be an all in because we are joining behind this uh 12 full is a way to be aggressive early on to force a reaction and to macro behind this now the big downside of going for a 12 full is that your gases will be delayed uh, if we do get into a longer game and i say if because the reality is that uh we could go for a 12 full drone pool as well uh we do have options to have a more aggressive variation of 12 full that is true uh but for now Looks like we are looking to expand. Take that natural base. Lings are on the way. Queen as well. And uh, everything is looking as it should as ooh, Rostock is going to be denying and delaying this natural base. This scout also confirms that, uh, again, it is more of a later expansion. Lings have been spotted. Lings reveal themselves by focusing down that pylon. And back at home, Rostock, he does delay his expansion. He throws down the full wall. We have a gateway, a cyber core. We're chronoing out that zealot. And the probe is here waiting to throw down a pylon if we need to wall off. So, so far, a really good reaction here out of Rostock. Again, because of the 12 full, already it's quote-unquote doing damage. Like, it's delaying the expansion. It's forcing a reaction out of the Protoss player and forcing them to be um, just not the most economic. Forcing them to be inefficient. Here we go. So far, Lings are going to be chipping away at this wall. Ideally, we want to try and get a surround on that Zealot, but... We are chronoing out another Zealot. It is on the way. Adept is coming out as well. So far, good control out of Rostock. He cannot get surrounded. There it is. With two Zealots, we can force this back. And now the turns are about to table. Expansion is on the way. Now, Eva did kind of, again, force a delayed base here. Delayed probing, delayed mining. But we're about to have two Zealots and two Adepts. And Rostock is about to go for a big counterattack. This may not look like much, but these four units can do a lot of damage, especially considering we have slowlings and a handful of queens to defend. So here we go. The army is pushing. The goal here is for Eba to minimize his losses. Now, unfortunately for Eba, because of this counterattack, he's forced to make more links. Like, even more links are on the way here. Uh, he would have liked for them to have been drones, but links instead. And we'll see if Eba can minimize his losses. We'll see if he can clean this up without losing too much. So far, he is keeping up the Adepts. They commit to the Shade. They get into the main base and they get one drone already. One drone does go down. We're going to be pivoting away here towards that natural. We do not commit to the Shade this time. We take down even more links of positioning. Ah, Positioning a little bit too good here. Really good control and use of the terrain from Rostock. He gets surrounded. A second drone goes down. The Adept barely escapes with one HP. How? 
The one HP adept does escape. Looking at the units lost tab, it was one adept dying and one zealot for 10 lings and two drones. Not a bad trade. Not a bad trade out of Rostock. It wasn't just that damage, but also the lost mining time in the main and also forcing out lings from the Zerg. As Rostock makes it back home, and we have our transition. We have two gateways in the natural, two gateways in the main at Twilight Council. Glaives. Glaives are on the way. Rostock is looking to keep the pressure up, is looking to keep the pressure on and get across the map. And Eba is in the dark. He doesn't fully know what's going on. And this Overlord is not going to make it. I don't think it's going to make it to the pillar here. It's just a little bit too far out. The Overlord is going to go down. Rough loss there for Eba. And this also means that because he doesn't have an Overlord here at the pillar, he won't see the move out. So he has that much less information. We have a Roach Warren on the way. Around a 4 minutes 30 Roach Warren timing, which is a little bit late. Um, considering what we're up against. Now, there's a bit of a give and take here. One, it is a Glaive Adept Opener. Yes, four gate Glaives. But there is no Robo, which means no Warp Prism, which means no reinforcements. So what you see is what you get. It's that we're going to waddle across the map and we're looking for some damage. Meanwhile, Eba is taking this very seriously. Lings are amassing. Ling speed is on the way. Remember, uh, Ling speed was delayed because of the 12 full. 12 full means, means very late gas. So very late tech here from Eba. Glaives is about to kick in. We're waiting for another warp in, and then we're going to be sending it across the map. There it is. Rostock, he was supply blocked for a moment. Actually, he's still supply blocked, actually. So, <laughs> did actually miss a couple of warp ins there, but regardless, we're moving out. Revealing ourselves, and we are up against how many? 34 lings. That is plenty of lings to deal with this. To keep up with the shades, roaches are coming out just in time. DFs, they go straight for the queens. They're going to get one. High NG queen goes out. They get a second queen as well. They get, oh, they're going for the third. They want another queen. They get a couple of roaches. Good trades here from Rustock. But the Lings, they're coming in first round. Where's the Shade? Shade was late. We get a surround, and Eba is cleaning a lot of this up. A really good catch. Only two Adepts escape. Again, that shade was just very late from Rostock. He just wasn't able to escape. And yeah, Eba has a lot of momentum. He's going for a big counterattack. Eba is not droning. He's cutting workers at 37. He has two gases, sorry, three gases mining. And he's going to be sending everything across the map. Dark Shrine is on the way, but it's not going to be ready in time. Dark Shrine, Immortal Production, Adepts here at the natural base. So we're looking to break the third. Ravagers in production as well. Ooh, at the same time, we do have the Adepts coming back in. <laughs> That's going to be a kill on the third base. And from here, Eba can drone. Hannah just saturated his bases here. The Roach Ravager are going to be threatening a dive into the natural, but there's plenty here to defend. We're not going to be able to break it through. Uh, maybe we can get the gateways. Uh, potentially the gateways. So Vile's a force back the army. Overcharges pop, keeping everything alive. The Immortal putting in a lot of work. Ooh, oh, oh my god, the Immortal! We go for it! We go for the dive! We will not quite get it. Oh, as we are breaking through the first gateway, second gateway is going to be going down as well. This is still a large army that we have to respect. I'm a little bit concerned. As the Lings are coming in to reinforce. Dive on top of all this. We go straight for the Immortals all we try to. Pylon goes down. The Artosis Pylon was real, depowering everything. No more shield batteries. No more Robo. GG gets called. And Eba will take game number two, tying up the series one to one. Ooh, GG. <laughs> GG, well played. I mean, I saw both shield batteries. I thought that we could maybe hold on for another round of warpins for another immortal to pop out, but no, I was wrong. Rostock, he was in more danger than I had assumed, and Eba does break through in the end. He does force the ace match. Ooh, GG. Again, a big moment that game for Eba was catching all those adepts. Remember that he was able to kill 
every single adept bar two by getting a surround by catching the army out of, out of position um out on the map and yeah with the death of that that meant that we could go for a big counter attack punish the third base and snowball out of control from there so a bit of a misstep bit of a misstep there from rostock but hopefully we can recover here in game number three And here we go spawning in the top left hand corner of Golden Aura. We have our Ukrainian Protoss representing CSO Esports being forced into the ace match. But looking to take it in the end, looking to make it into the upper bracket finals, it is Rostov. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have as opponent, we have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. Tying up the series with a 12 pool. Here we go. As this time, Eva is not going for a 12 wall, throws down the emote as he usually does, and is going for a hatch first instead. Going for a 16 hatch here on the low ground. Very standard timing, likewise. Rostock going for his own gate expand as well. Probe is coming in for a scout, and we'll be getting eyes on the hatchery that's already thrown down. So, again, economic opener out of Eva. And Rostock has to confirm this. Again, remember. Last game, it was a 12 pool, so Rostock needs to make sure he's aware of what Eva is up to and what exactly he's doing. It's just a hatch gas pool. Standard opener out of Eva. Likewise, Rostock, gate expand, standard opener as well. So, the early game is looking to be pretty... The early game is looking to be pretty standard and pretty normal. Nothing too crazy, nothing too wild. It's the mid-game that our attention does fall upon. Not just that, but also the map itself. We are loading into Golden Aura course a very defensive map uh, a map where you can get up to three bases very easily even a fourth is not too difficult to hold on to depending on which fourth we do take um so yeah with bearing that in mind i expect this to go into the mid game again we could end up seeing some lurker play out of eba or we could even head in a different direction rush distance by ground is relatively short uh we have seen a lot of zerg players try to sneak in or sorry sneak out a spire and go into muters in this matchup um, that is a possibility, but based on this map, I'm not too sure we can get away with Aspire. Not too sure if we're going to be able to keep that hidden from Protoss and avoid any kind of punishment. And there it is. It is going to be a Twilight Council opener once again from Rostock. We saw this in the previous game. In the last game, it made sense to go Glaive Adepts to try to punish Eva. This time, we could see Glaives again. We could also see a Dark Shrine opener instead. In the last game, there was a Dark Shrine thrown down, but we couldn't really get to see the DTs come into play. Um, yeah, the game had ended by that point, and yeah, the DTs, they just couldn't really impact and influence game number two. But that could be where we're headed here in game number three. Again, this is the ace match. It all ends here, one way or another. One player will rise, the other will fall. Additional gateways are on the way. Still no Robo, bear that in mind. We haven't pulled out a gas. I'm curious as to the direction that we are going in. As Rostock is just going to be waiting for his minerals. And there it is. It is going to be Glaives. Now, we have seen this build kind of go through the European scene and... Uh, Hero did do this as well last weekend in KSL. Um, this is a more, I guess, macro-oriented Glaive Adept opener. So, usually when you go for four gate Glaive Adepts, it's with a Robo. And because it's with a Robo, it's actually a two-base opener. Like, you, you stay on two bases that much longer. Uh, the Adepts, they get across the map, and then you have to transition into uh, Immortal Production or Robotics Bay to survive, to actually hold on to your third, and, to, and you get a later third base. Here, this is without a Robo which means a much faster third. So it's a more economic four gate blink. Much more economic instead. Um, it also means that, again, you can't really reinforce across the map. You're gonna have to warp in the depths back at home and then shade across the map at a later time instead. 
Meanwhile, Eba does throw down a fast Roach Warren. He has correctly identified the build of choice. He saw all the Adepts. Adepts are shading across the map. Roaches are not quite on the way yet. We need a little bit more time. But again, because there was no Robo with this opener, it means that we need to walk across. We can't reinforce with that War Prism. So a bit of a different dynamic. There it is, Yep. They have revealed themselves. Going to be threading a shade into the natural. So far, we do keep up. Yep's being forced back. Meanwhile, a big gateway explosion. Oh my god. That is five more gates. That's eight gates in total. This is a three base all in. We are not. This is, it's a fake. It's a fake third. A three base all in. Sorry, a two base all in from Rostock with a fake third base. We're just doubling down here on mass glaive adept. Which is crazy. Oh my god. Absolutely insane. And uh, Iba needs to realize what's going on. He comes in for a Link Scout, but he runs into the Adepts. He sees a lot of them that should trigger reaction. There we go. More Roaches are on the way. Spy Crawler gets cancelled. Ooh. Uh, we're, we're looking to throw down more Overlords. Lair in production as well. Rostock completely all in with this, and Eva doesn't know. If he ma he's making drones! Eva's droning! Oh my god, he's unaware of the all in. He didn't get to see the lack of saturation at the third base. We get another big warping of adepts. That is how many adepts? 25. 26 adepts in total. Oh my god. <laughs> And they head into the third base. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the roaches. There are just so many of us. They don't care about the roaches. We cancel the shade. Transfuse will keep some of these roaches alive, though. Do you need to be respected? As the Ling Roach trying to keep up here with the shades. The queens are going down left and right. The roach numbers are dwindling. But so far, no economic damage. Spine crawlers are on the way in the mineral lines. We do commit to the shade. Prism gets into the main base. We get some adepts. Four workers do go down. We're getting more. Drones are falling left and right. Finally, economic damage is being done. Nine drones in total. But it looks like Eba should be able to clean this up without too much trouble. I say that for drones. The target firing 16 very quickly. You can see it just spike up here in damage. 17 workers go down. We shade towards the third once again, going for another warping into the main base. And Rostock behind this. I mean, he's up in bases. He can stop. He can stop probing. <laughs> he's just doubling down on the depths. Rostock takes a worker lead. But Eva still has the better army. Rostock is down to 11 adepts. And we're going for wave two. <laughs> we're going for the second round. But the second round, it's nowhere near as strong as the first. And Eba, he's he's stabilizing. I mean, he's got a spine crawler here at the third. He's got a spine crawler at the natural. Oh my god, the prison taking a lot of damage. The roach count getting higher. We are up to 21 roaches against the 19 adepts. Almost one to one. And here we go. The adepts are moving out. Prism going to be distracting the main army, and here we go. We actually recall the prism back home. The prism took too many hits, but we're coming in. Meanwhile, Eba has been taking this very seriously. He joined up to 40, only 40 workers. You can see Rostock. He, fun fact, he hasn't been making workers. He's transferring because he's running out of mineral patches in the main. He's just transferring workers over towards that third. Oh my god, how many adepts? 29! 29 adepts, almost 30. Oh my god. Here we go, we're diving on the army. Adepts are going down. Gonna be threatening a shade towards the natural base. If the Ravagers get on top of that prison, they can bile it down. We had 29, we are down to 24. Five adepts did, I mean, we, we did just have a warp in. We got 10 or so adepts. Threatening a shade towards that third. 
more attempts on the way. The vials! No! The prism! More prism is gonna be able to unsiege. Does escape. That was a scary moment for Rostock. This is still a scary moment though, because he's running out of steam. We're down to 17 adepts. And if we commit to the shade, there's an army waiting. And Rostock is forced all the way back to his third base. Has been probing. We have detection just in case for a Dark Templar. Eva thinking of every scenario at the same time the prism slips into the main. But we can't hold on to the third. It's just, it's just, it's not happening. We can't hold on. No shield battery, no overcharge. Shield battery still in production. GG gets called and Eva does it. He survives the all in. He counterattacks and he wins the series two to one. GG. G, G, well played. <laughs> Congratulations with that. Eba will take the series 2-1. to one. Ooh, Advancing on to the upper bracket finals. And, uh, and Rostock, of course, he gets knocked down to the lower bracket instead. But that was a, that was a spicy game there. I was not expecting Rostock. We were talking about how the, sh the rush distance on Goldnora is a little bit shorter. So all-ins can hit a little bit harder. Um... I was I was expecting you know a commitment to Glaive Adept into the third base into into the mid game, but no, we just went straight for the all in eight gateways, two base all in with a fake third. Eventually, Russell was trying to trying to get his third up and running, but alas, he just didn't find the damage he was looking for. He did do a decent amount. He killed I want to say up to nineteen drones in total, but he needed to do more. He needed to kill Eba. Eba. Thankfully, did correctly read that it was Glaives, and he did throw down, a, throw down a Roach one in time. He had a Roach army in time. Barely was able to hold on. GG. GG. Well played. And uh, with that, we have to catch up with the bracket. <laughs> we have to catch up on what has been going on. With that, congratulations to Eva as he does advance on. Uh, Rostock will have another chance as Rostock will be knocked down to the lower bracket where he faces off against Orianna in a best of one. Best of luck. As uh, we do head on over. I'm just going to be looking for our players. <laughs> I believe Demi and uh, I believe both Demi and Middle VK are currently mid series. I'm not entirely certain as to whether they're in game one, game two, or game number three. I'm actually looking for them at the moment. Uh, they're not over in the Americas region. Maybe they're over in Europe. Oh, they are. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we are going to be going on a short break. Short break here, as it looks like Demi and Middle VK, they are mid-series. And we have to wait for them before we have our next matchup. Again, exclamation mark, be in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the back of yourselves. Um, but you can see here that Eba is just waiting for that series as well. Waiting for the winner of that best of three. So uh, we are going to take a moment. I'm... Again, I'm not too sure how long the break is going to be, unfortunately. Um, actually, I can set up some different duct tapes. We've been playing the same ones. We've been playing the same ones over and over again. Uh, let's let's have some Tim Tams and let's have some... Uh... Oh my Oh my god! <laughs> Ah, as uh, as as we as we're going into a break, a big shout out to Asher for subscribing for 21 months. Oh my God, Eva! <laughs> Thank you so much for the support, Papi. Gracias, gracias. Much love, much love to Asher, bro. Uh, also, for not Asher, bro. Asher, bro. I'm putting him on blast. Um, he was meant to cast with me today, but Asher, bro, made the mistake of going outside, and now he's sick. <laughs> este Asher Bros. This is why you don't go outside. This is why you stay inside and just play StarCraft. <laughs> We're going to be doing a short break. Uh, when we return, we will have our next series. See you soon. Enjoy the duct tape. Uh, take this moment to um, hydrate your hydras, massage your marines, drain your disruptors, cut your colossus. We'll see you guys soon.
quack, quack. I ordered like uh, 50 pounds of Tim Tams straight from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Tim Tams the cakes. You ever heard of them like? They're not cakes. <laughs> what the hell are you on about? <laughs> I want to make my own cake and just call it a Tim Tam cake. <laughs> You're like, this yeah. is a Tim Tam, right? You like tweet it out. And it's like, uh... Or I'll get Tim Tams, crush them up, and put them in a cake, and it'll be a Tim Tam cake. Oh, God. Awful. Awful. <laughs> like, it's like, I will have none of this. <laughs> this is blasphemy. Unacceptable. <laughs> it's a war crime. You can get, you can get sent That's to jail here for that. Geneva Convention also. That is definitely a war crime. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to ice and that other thing, that other substance we are not sure about. Ice and more ice. Because its its existence has not been proven. Maybe if it tune up the textures, maybe it'll be there. I don't know. <laughs> there is no chrome. Hashtag there oh. is no chrome. Hashtag the chrome is a lie. We've been told a lie. <laughs> We've been lied to. A lie. We've been lied to. There is no chrome. Wake up, sheeple. Wake up. Get woke. The chrome is a lie. They're, they're, they're coming in. They're coming in. Oh, no. uh, it turns out it was just a uh, misunderstanding. Not that. <laughs> there, there, is, there, is, there is chrome. Everything is fine. If he manages to snipe out the observer, the DPs could possibly go and take out the armor. Yeah. Doesn't uh, the Kyojin doesn't have an observer here though, so he can't really see. Secret Ninja's observer. Oh no! Oh, oh. Kill these bones. Oh. Oh. That's my disruptor right there. <laughs> Claire, Ares, what are you doing? Stop playing the game for Secret Ninja. Uh, Stop I want to be in a final so bad. This is a vivid uh, description of how I picture Australia: giant bugs that you have to kill with guns. I mean, we don't have guns here, so we gotta, we gotta like boomerang that, right. that stuff, you know, just gotta... <laughs> yeah, boomerang! <laughs> gotta boomerang all the bugs. That yeah. is hilarious. One thing me and Yaku actually, now that I remember, we need to clear up, because I don't know if you answered it or were there to hear, but, um... I already forgot what it was. Something about... Something about Steve Irwin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yaku said that everyone in Australia either has or knows someone who has a Steve Irwin shrine. Do you have a Steve Irwin shrine? So there's something that he needs to know about about Yaku is that he he says a lot, he doesn't know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It just it just sounds like it would be fun if it was true. It would be. It would be. It would be fun. I am the Information Goblin. I still mod and Blomlitz. Blomlitz is the uh, the anti steel mold. For those who are not aware, he's a he's a very evil person that lives inside of me. I am you. Yes, we know, we know. Stop it. Interrupting the casting all the time, being annoying. I am not annoying. I am evil. Alright. Please say so. Uh, anyway, speaking of evil, we are on Death Aura. L.E. L.E. of course stands for Um... Little evil, little evil. That's what Lomnitz is. If you in the northwest corner of the Should we go in Spanish this one? <laughs> do it. Do it. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Alright, I don't know if I can do this. Alright, let's try. Um, aquí, en esta esquina de la mapa, es un Terran player. Es rojo, es rojo. Y a la izquierda, izquierda I think, I don't know my directions is perfectly, yeah. but I believe it's izquierda. Yeah. A la izquierda, este uh, jugador es verde y es un Terran y es el final map. Si puede ganar, yo creo. Es Goga. 
<risa> y juntos, ¿qué y, son? Y, y juntos son los antimancos. <risa> That was, that was better than what I could have done. Um, it was better than what I expected. And el sud, no, 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 uh, and el derecho, izquierda, dere, no, yeah, derecho, derecho. Aquí, aquí en la mapa, en la esquina tenemos el azul Terran, tenemos Marea y su, su, what's his teammate? Um. Su, su, <laughs> su compadre, su amigo, yeah. su enamorada, mm. no sé qué es, pero... Aquí, ten <laughs> aquí tenemos el Protos, es azul, es Derky, y juntos, juntos son el equipo... Uh, uh, lo los Lamas, los Lamas. Los Lamas. How do you say Lama in Spanish? Lama, Lama, yeah, maybe. I right, just Lama? Yeah. I don't know either. I completely <laughs> skipped trying to go for north or south. That was that was going to be an impossible one for me. Quack. And coming to you live from the Plaga de Cut. Beach on the Isles of Pine from the Lagoy part of Bintan Island from Karagandi in Kazakhstan. We are here with the 29th edition of ESL Pro Tour Open Cup Asia Division. I am your host, Yaku of the Zaku, and with me today I have La Pastora, que es el G. La pastora que es alergica a la pasta. El jugador del bolos con todos los cajolers. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, I have El Narado que saca todos los caimanes himself. Light underscore VIP. How are you doing, Light? What's up, Yaku? <laughs> Yeah, good. <laughs> the entire time, I was like, why can't I add you? Like, I'm looking for you in the, in the list, and <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> well, here we are in our. Oh my god, it's not a ZBZ. <laughs> oh god. Dios mío, gracias. <laughs> <laughs> we have our Red Zerg player from DHZ.
audience, welcome back everyone, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those duct tapes. We had a bit of an extended break there, just waiting for series to wrap on up. But here we go, we are diving into the upper bracket finals and spawning in the top left hand corner of hard lead we have the indian zerg player representing maturino esports it is demi and spawning in the bottom right hand corner we have as opponent we have the english zerg player representing the platinum heroes it is eva and as we get ready for this we will have predictions Open. Predictions are just un momento, papi, un momento. Predictions are going to be open in the chat for a couple of minutes, so you can place your bets on who you think is going to make it to the grand finals. Will it be one Zerg or the other? Ooh. As for now, we have standard openers. It is going <laughs> outside of the, sp the spray where they hatch first here out of Eba, hatch first out of Demi. No early game aggression, not yet, not in the ZVZ. Meanwhile, for some context, getting into this. Demi, of course, was able to bring down Mindle VK 2 to 0. Very surprising. You know, I, I do rate Mindle VK quite highly here. And to be fair, I do think he's pretty comparable to Demi, but to 2 0, very impressive. Very impressive out, out of Demi. Likewise, Eba took down Rostock 2 to 1 as well. Uh, very limited Terran representation here today. I mean, I say that Spiffy B and Oriana are both Terran players, but they did struggle in the first round and they're looking to fight back fight back against the Protoss in the lower bracket. So best of luck to our Terrans. As for now, Hatch Gas Pool. Hatch Gas Pool from both Eva and Demi as well. So as standard as you can get here in the ZVZ. Now Demi, of course, he is very fond of, incredibly fond of his muters in this matchup. And we'll see if we can get there. We'll see if we can slide into our muters. Never mind, Demi getting to a very fast Eva chamber. Now, this could go one of two ways. We can rush into fast. This is most likely actually plus one melee. So, link speed and plus one melee should line up here uh, to get in towards a massive link flood timing. Otherwise, we could even head towards something different, something like plus one carapace. Uh, but I feel like this is lined up for melee. There we go. We have 100 gas. So we're going to be sending it there. Yep, on melee. So, the way this works, if you're curious yourself, if you start melee first and then you wait for your 200, your, your next 100 gas for speed, they actually line up. They actually line up with each other as melee does take a little bit longer than speed to finish up. So you can hit a very strong timing here with these two upgrades. And Eva for the time being is in the dark. For the time being, he's not fully aware of what is going on. As the roaches are coming forward, just gonna be focusing on droning for the time being. Just saturating our bases. And getting into the swing of things. As Demi is gonna be moving out here with his scouting links. Two links to scout. Likewise, Eba actually gonna be staying on two bases. He, he I, I, I know a lot of my focus was on Demi, but Eba skipped link speed. He's going two base roach. Ooh, two base roach here out of Eba. Lair is on the way, which means he's gonna be walling off here at the natural. Very greedy here out of Eba. And do you see Lings are gonna be sipping on in? They catch sight of all the queens. And I wanna favor Eba. I wanna favor Eba in this position because sure the overlords are being zoned away. Sure, Eba doesn't know that a Link Flood is coming. Like Demi is just amassing a mass amount of Lings. Eba is gonna be walling off though. Ah, but even though he walls off. It's going to take a long time to make any roaches. No Bailey Nest either. Oh, we do have that tumor thrown down, and the Link Flood is soon to be upon us. The Overlord was shut down, and Demi is cutting workers here at 26. How many Links do we have so far? We have 24, about to be 48 Links. That's a lot of Links. <laughs> now, again, we, for the most part, have a wall set up. Um, we will have one Transfuse available as well. And here we go, the Lings, they are rushing across the map so far. No scouting whatsoever from Eva. He doesn't see, he sees the third base, but that's all he, that's all he does know. As the Lings are now revealed, Eva has a couple of roaches on the way. He canceled, no! He canceled the wall! A massive hole here in Eva. Eva, yeah, that's... <laughs> it's just, it's just going to get completely surrounded. The Lings, they flood in, and Demi, he takes game number one. GG, oh my god. GG, well played again, completely unscouted, and that's a little bit on Eba there, as Eba had no idea what was going on. Um, as Eba, Eba had no idea what was going on, 
And uh, yeah, there was just no scouting there. Unfortunate that he happened to be cancelling that Evo Chamber as well. So the wall was not a wall. I, I was just caught off guard by the <laughs> by the comment at the time. It just <laughs> really caught me off guard. And there, there we go, just like that. Ah, oh, the the ape, the ape uh, that you know we we harness the 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 inner NA, the inner ape within us at times. And yeah, we're able to take game number one. Demi with a one zero lead. Unamas is all he needs to advance on to the Grand Finals. <laughs> GG, well played. And sometimes that's how these mirror matchups can go. Sometimes that is just how they can turn out. As we are going to be switching regions. Game 1 was on EU. Game 2 will be on NA. Let's go. Go as again for now we're just gonna be getting that lobby set up. I'm not too sure what the vetoes were. Not too certain. But uh we'll see what this leads us into. Again, I didn't even get to talk about the map itself, but hard lead of course does lend towards these all ins. A short rush distance by ground. Oh boy. And uh, can we recover? Can we get a game three out of this? Personally, I hope so, but not up to me. It's up to our players. And here we are, game two. Golden Aura. Okay. I would say that this is a bit more of a defensive map at times. I, have, I would say defensive map for some of the other races. ZVZ, we can get we can get crazy. We can get chaotic. Uh -huh. Let's go. Let's see, here we go. We're getting into the next game. <laughs> Heepa. Say, Demi, I hate you. Less than three. Oh my god. Let's go. Now, I doubt we're going to be getting another Link Flood here in game number two, but there's just so much aggression or so much, so many aggressive possibilities here in ZVZ. Two base all-ins. You, know, you cut workers at 40, even 50. You just send that Poppy. It can be terrifying. And here we go, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Golden Aura. We have the player leading this series 1-0, to zero, representing Matcharino Esports. <laughs> <laughs> it is Demi. <laughs> That's spawning in the top left hand corner. We have his opponent going for a 12 pool. We have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. Again, game one was on the U. Game two. Oh my god. Uh, apparently, Eva did agree to this. Oh. Demi saying, uh, we can head on over to EU. We may... Okay. <laughs> there you go. If there's a rematch, it looks like we will be getting into EU. Meanwhile, for now, Eba going for a 12 full. Now, because of the high ping, uh, he may even just go all in with this. I'm really curious to see what kind of, what variation of 12 full we're going to be getting. His lings are on the way. Will we select more of these workers? That's what I'm curious about. As for now, just going to be those links. Uh, expansion should be taken momentarily, but... And now uh, there's no expansion. <laughs> I was like, we should have already seen a drone by now. There was no drone. The boys are being pulled. It's all or nothing. This series or this game will end one way or another. Either Eva kills Demi or he dies trying. Demi going for a hatch gas pull. Standard opener. The all-in has been spotted. The Overlord does see the links coming across the map and the drones as well. Demi, he knows. I love that. Okay, one drone is being sent down. So the goal here is that ideally you want to throw, you want you want to hide this drone and throw down the spine. Throw down the spine crawler here at the natural. Eba should be going straight for the main base, so he ignores this worker. And the goal here is to eventually rotate down to the low ground. There it is. Spine crawlers on the way. Uh, I feel like usually it's two spine crawlers, but one for now. Demi oh, has to be very careful to lose too much. He does evacuate the main. Heads towards the natural. Two drones do fall. Links and Queens are on the way. And can Demi protect that spine crawler? Up. Oh. So far, good positioning. But are the spine crawlers getting surrounded? Likewise, spine crawler did go down in the main from those links. Oh, and Eba's losing a lot of momentum. He's losing a lot of time. The queen is about to come out. 
And there it is. The queen does pop. The boys are being pulled. Decent drone drilling. And it looks like, yeah, Demi's going to be able to hold. He's going to be able to clean this up. Shut down the army. GG gets called. And Demi will take the series 2-0. Shutting Eva down. GG. Oh, my God. <laughs> GG, well played. Again, a good scout and a good reaction out of Demi. Just completely shutting that down. Mate, Demi, he was forged in the flames of Southeast Asia with players like Ender, Gogo -Go Joey, Mio Maika. Mate, you don't get more animalistic than that. And uh, yeah, Demi, he was able to completely shut that down. Really good reaction, really good response. And with that, Demi will advance on to the grand finals. GG. GG, well played. And with that, we have our first finalist. And who is he going to be facing? Who is next? We have a couple of updates coming in and exclamation mark B in the chat. If you guys want to have a look at the back of yourselves on Wikipedia or on Challenge. As there it is, we have Demi waiting in the finals and he's waiting for... A number of matches to finish. We have Mino VK taking down Spiffy B 1-0. Rostock versus Oriana still ongoing in a best of one. Hopefully they know it's a best of one, not a best of three. <laughs> so Mino VK is waiting in the next round. Rostock and Oriana still facing off. I believe still facing off in that best of one as well. Winner of that series will be facing off against Eba in the lower bracket finals. So Looks like we still have a couple of matches ongoing. Um, I also need to double check and make sure that uh, oh, that Rostock isn't already playing against Middle VK, so I'm heading over to the European server. It's very possible that maybe they didn't update us. It is very possible. Alright, so we are going to be going on a break. Going to be going on a short break here, just waiting for some of these matches to wrap up, to finish up. Um, before we get into it, it looks like I believe Rostock and Minovik are mid-series, are just getting confirmation, uh, which means we're just, we're just going to be waiting for that to finish up, and then we're going to be diving into some more EBA versus either Rostock or Minovik, um, I believe. Just getting some confirmation. Until then, we're going to be going on a short break, hopefully not too long, just getting some more duct tapes just uh getting everything set up the lovely people in the chat and i guess i should also mention as well that if you do want to support this tournament if you want to support this tournament series um this is currently a bi-weekly but if we reach certain goals this can turn into a weekly and we can boost the prize pool uh patreon patreon is the place that we have an exclamation mark patreon command and an exclamation mark match arena command as well to get links to support our tournament series whether it's this specific tournament or or even um just all of our events patreon is the place to do it so if you're interested you can support us there otherwise thank you for all the support that we already have you can see our goals underneath uh the tbd towards the bottom right hand side of the screen uh you can see that again we, that's kind of like our our stretch goals if you will to fund our events and to grow our events even further so Thank you. Thank you for the support. We're going to be going in a short break. When we return, we'll have some more StarCraft. See you soon. See you soon. Quack, quack. Oh my god. Immortal? Immortal? Gonna get Wait, taken what? Up three? What? No, it survived? Living <laughs> up to its aim. It's on 4 HP. It has no right to live, but somehow the Immortal yeah. survives. The SCV finished him off. <laughs> it's got one kill. The SCV that... killed the Immortal. <laughs> That is a cinematic goddamn shot. Oh my god. SCV atop of a pile of immortal. Jesus. Like, that SCV deserves a medal, but, like, no one's gonna live to tell the tale. Like, no one's gonna be able to survive long enough to let everyone know that, SC and that SCV was a hero. This overlord, though, if, if the overlord positioned to the north of um, Papa Panda's base catches a mutus, that could give it ample time for Nubinator to react. But I think even with the 
Like, yeah, they are going to see their mutas, but I think he just saw another Hydra deck, right? At this stage. No, here's the thing, here's the thing. Papa Panda is showing the mutalisks, and now they're making watches. So the watches are going to be the surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually wild. I love that. This is insane. <laughs> It's beautiful. Oh. I remember you looking very differently, but you know, it's just, I'm not judging. Yeah, the camera adds five pounds, even though last time you saw me it was with the camera as well. But... Why would the camera pay you? <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> European humor. <laughs> They like, do you know why it's called 2000 Atmospheres? Why is it called 2000 Atmospheres, Chase? Because it's under the sea and there's 2000 Atmospheres at pressure. <laughs> uh, but I believe they have their own, um, like, studio or, like, uh, like kind of um, complex where they have all their players rock up and stuff. And It's cool that they do support Ranger the way that they do. Um, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the C players. It's it's cool that they were able to find find that support. Yep, little community but very tight knit. It's the best. I love you, Light. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I love you too, Chase. Back. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Worst love story than Twilight. <laughs> Blackburn L E. What does L E stand for, Light? Ellie stands for liquid and danger. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean, Chase? Ellie was my first high school crush. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Why do you keep bringing her up? Why do you keep bringing her up, Chase? I'll let her go, man. I can't do it. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time I, that's <laughs> why I stopped playing tournaments. Every time I saw Ellie, uh, it reminded me. Of... <laughs> but yes, Blackburn, ladder edition. Shaking my head, mate. Shake my head. This Ellie guy, edition. This guy thinks it's ladder edition. <laughs> oh my. I was maxed out, but yeah, I didn't we know what I was hitting. Yeah, exactly. We were both maxed out, but like, we yeah. couldn't target fire or anything. So you can see the big difference here in the teams if you look at the army value graph. It's, we're all pretty much the same here, except for the two Protosses. The two Protosses <laughs> shoot up, and then, <laughs> and then one, one of them, one of them plummets to the ground. The other doesn't. <laughs> you can see here in the graph, the players. <laughs> Mr. Senator, I would like you to... Uh... Mr. Judge, I would like you to uh, <laughs> notice <that> you... <laughs> Exhibit I... number one. Ex <laughs> what is the opposite of stone? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's going up, army. yes, in the wrong way. Yeah. And welcome back everyone, welcome back. I apologize for jumping into this a little bit late. I didn't, I forgot that I turned off the scene switcher, uh, but we are diving into the lower bracket finals. We just barely missed out on the openers. Thankfully, nothing did go on. And in the top left hand corner, we have the Ukrainian Protoss, the red Protoss looking for revenge after going down to his opponents earlier in the tournament, representing CSO Esports. It is Rostock. And spawning. In the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the English Drake player looking to pull off, uh, to pull it off once again, to take down his opponent for a second time, representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eba. Predictions are open for another minute or so. Not for too long, but for another minute, predictions are open. So place your bets in the chat for how you think this series will turn out. Again, this is a rematch from earlier in the day, and these two went all the way to the ace match. Fun fact. This is the only series that went to the ace match so far, and they may be looking to do so again. As we have that rematch underway. We saw Rostock thrive and also be hyper aggressive. The same can be said for Eba as well. The last time they faced off on a hard lead, it did go into the into the mid game. We saw Hydro Lurker Viper against a Robo Heavy composition with Blink Stalkers as well. 
So we'll see if that does come to pass. For the time being, though, we do have our Stargate thrown down. So a Stargate opener out of Rostock. We saw him play around a lot previously with Glaive Adepts with mixed success. And it looks like this time, at least on hard lead, is going to be avoiding those Adepts. Ling's going to be coming in for a scout. Slipping into the main base, into the natural, getting a full scout of the main, getting eyes on the tech, on the Stargate, at least. Oh, we get a probe. Good pick up here from Eva. Gets a probe. He does get eyes on the first unit of choice as well. Does see the Oracle on the way. Does not get a second probe, though. But at least does get eyes on the tech. And this tells Eva that he is safe to drone and just focus on queen production. We do not need any lings. Do not need much more at all here. As uh, yeah, Eva can just focus on his economy. Meanwhile, Rostock going into a very fast Twilight Council. That is a Twilight Council before third base. A very aggressive follow-up here from Rostock. This is, I imagine, going to be for Glaive Adepts. We saw how fond he was of it in the previous series, and we're doubling down. That is four gates in total with the Twilight Council. Show us the Glaives. Meanwhile, the Oracle does get across the map. Threatening the Mineral Lines is going to find a drone. Doesn't quite get a second, though. Takes a lot of hits. Oh, my God. Taking a lot of damage here from the Queens. Eba was in position, and there it is. Glaives are on the way. Eba, for the time being, doesn't know. He has an Overlord here outside the natural. Ling's going to be moving out. This third base is delayed. I wonder if Eba is going to take note of that. Again, the reason why this third base is delayed is because of this tech. Ling's going to be checking the linear third. Now the triangular third. They do get eyes on the Nexus. Roach Warren is already on the way. A decent timing here for the Roach Warren. It should come out in time for the aggression, for the push. So really good read here out of Eba. Very safe play. And Eba is pushing out. Okay, just trying to get a read on what's going on. There is no robot with this, so the Adepts are going to be shading across. Not the Adepts are seen. We have confirmation. We know. Back at home, Lair in production. So this Lair is important for the counter attack. It is going to grant access to Roach speed and also, uh, also Overseers in case we have DTs to worry about for that detection and here you go the adepts are on the way we're getting into overlord speed actually okay Overlord speed on the way we have a handful of roaches of queens they come forward so far clutch transfuse but one queen goes down we commit to the shade we get into the natural base boys are being pulled off the mineral line and so far, very limited, uh, very limited economic damage. We get five. Oh, it's ramping up. <laughs> we got five drone kills. We're going to get a six. We're going to get a seventh as well. Eight worker kills so far. Not bad. After all is said and done, Rostock, he does take an economic lead. He escapes with a handful of adepts. And he is getting into his follow-up. He's getting into plus one, a blink, and immortal production. Oh, but I love this from Eva. <laughs> he takes down the Overlord, the, the Oracle. Okay, so because of the fast lair, we get Dropper Lords. Overlord Speed has kicked in as well. So we are going for a massive counterattack. No Roach Speed, bear that in mind, but we may not need it because Eva's going for a big all in. Cutting workers here at 40. Rostock has drawn up to 60, by the way. 60 workers here for Rostock. But what is his army looking like? He has one immortal sentries. The queens that jumped on top of the army. The Biles! No, we're trapped. The Biles, they connect with the sentries. Overcharge putting in a lot of work. We are spreading creep. We can transfuse. The boys, they have to be pulled. The shield battery goes down. Good juggling as well. Keeping the queens alive. One queen may go down. We barely keep it alive. The juggling is too good. GG gets called. And Eva will defend against the Glaive Adepts. And... Uh, Go all in, takes down Rostock, or takes game one. Whew. GG. GG, well played. I love that, again, against the Glaive Adept follow up from Rostock, we immediately went into not just a fast lair, but um, Overlord speed as well, knowing, anticipating a counter attack, getting ready for that next step. The planning there from Eva was on point, and just like that, Eva takes game number one. But as a reminder, a similar thing happens the first time they face. 
where Iba took game one, Rostock took game two and forced the ace match. And I'm hoping we can do that again. I'm hoping we can get a little bit more out of these two players. Gibbs, man. Gibbs. I'm greedy like that. I, I, I want more. <laughs> and we'll see if we can get it. As we are loading into that next game. On Ocean Board. Here we go. And spawning in the top left hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the Ukrainian Protoss player representing CSO Esports. Down in this series, we're looking to fight back. It is Rosta. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner we have as opponent we have the english zurich player representing the platinum heroes it is eva eva let's go as again rostock once again trying to rely on those glaive adepts with mixed success did do some decent economic damage that is true but he did not quite recognize the follow-up that was upon him they counter all in which did catch him off guard. And we'll see if Rostock will shift gears a little bit. As we head towards game number two. So far, Probe coming in for a scout. Eva going for a hatch gas pool. Standard opener out of Eva. Nothing too crazy. Not going for a 15-15 or anything like that. Not going for anything too aggressive either. Hatch gas pool. Gas pool out of our Zerg player. Likewise, a gate expand into a cyber core from Rostov. Standard openers all around. As we settle, our, settle ourselves into the mid game. As we attempt to. For now, we're waiting for our tech of choice. Uh, we, are, we are an ocean born. Relatively short rush distance by ground. I'm curious if Rostov is tempted to go into a Twilight Council opener. Um, I heard, I want to see a Stargate. I want to see a mid game, but we'll see. It's going to be on Rostock here. Once the Cybercore finishes, we'll see what he throws down. Show us what you got. Meanwhile, we see Eba just kind of chilling back at home as well, just focusing on droning. Should be seeing a third hatchery momentarily. And our tech of choice is going to be the Twilight Council. Here we go. <laughs> so once again, it looks like a Glaive Adept opener out of Rostock. I mean, I say once again. I'm talking about the previous series. Uh, in the last game, of course, it was Stargate into Glaives. Or into a third base afterwards as well. This is a straight-up Twilight Council opener. Now, this doesn't have to be Glaive Adepts. This could also be a Dark Shrine. But we have pulled out a gas. That means it, it is Glaives. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Gateways are on the way. Um, it's looking like, once again, the variation without the Robo. So this is looking like a more economic Glaive Adept opener instead. There we go. Three gates in total. No Robo. As we spoke about previously, and to reiterate, if you weren't here for the first series, uh, this is a, a kind of a more modern variation of Glaive Adepts, where this actually leads into a faster third. Usually, you open up with a Robo alongside this. You get into uh, an Immortal follow-up or a Disruptor follow-up, and you go for a delayed third. But without a robo, you have excess resources here to go for a third base. Meanwhile, uh, Eva is going all in. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm not too sure if I'm fond of this from Eva. Here we go. The links are coming in. Boys have been pulled to try to mineral walk past the wall. And Eva is just link flooding. First adept is going to be going down. The links, they, sorry, the drones, they do manage to get past the, the, past the adept. Boys are being pulled. And we do have a second adept that's about to barely go down. The links are flooding in. They, but they bust through the wall. Probes are going down. Shield battery is not done. A clutch force field, but it's not good enough. Stalkers are falling. We get a full surround. Eva just cutting workers at 20 and just flooding nothing but lings. Three drones. Two of them managed to escape. They live to tell the tale. And it looks like Eva has broken the natural. Pylon goes down. And Artosis Pylon canceling the warp in. GG gets called. And Eva will take 
game number two and the series two to zero. GG. GG, well played. Uh, <laughs> and Eva will take it in the end, advancing on to the grand finals for a rematch. My condolences to Rostock. Um, my condolences there, but again, Rostock, he was unable to scout. Um, he didn't send his first couple of adepts across the map to actually get a read on what was going on, on whether or not Eva was droning or not. As we noticed a little bit late ourselves, Eva wasn't droning. As soon as I saw the LinkedIn production, I was like, hold up. <laughs> I was like, I've been hyper fixated on the Protoss when I should have been hyper fixated on the Zerg player as well, as Eva just sending everything across the map. Cutting workers at 20. Even pulling some boys to mineral walk past the past the initial units to get us around to deny the shield battery and, and, and the wall. Very well done. Very well executed there. And yeah, here we go. We have our finals. The grand finals are set in stone. It is going to be that ZVZ rematch between Eva and Demi. There we go. Again, looking at the run of these players, they have gone through quite a number of them. They managed to bust through, or they both managed to take down their own respective Protosses. Demi took down Mindle VK, Eva took down Rostock, and even in the rematch, Eva was looking even stronger, more terrifying, more awake, more upset. <laughs> it all comes down to a ZVZ. We saw that it was a pretty short ZVZ the last time they faced. Um, a lot of aggression, a lot of all-ins. Um, I'm sure we're going to be calming down a little bit, though, in the finals. I would like to believe so like to like to think so <laughs> as a reminder again if you want to support this tournament exclamation mark patreon we do have a patreon set up it actually funds not just this tournament the sparkling tuna cup it also funds uh the grand platypus open and the tenacious turtle tussle basically we have a bunch of region locked events that uh support some of the smaller regions in the starcraft scene so if you're interested you can support them there otherwise sparkling tuna cup is open to all open to all regions so Likewise, you can support our tournaments via Patreon if you wish. Uh, you also gain replay packs and other benefits uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, likewise, we also do have a Matcherino, Matcherino page if you want to support this tournament specifically and boost the prize pool for Sparking Tuna Cup number 38. You can do so via Matcherino. Otherwise, we're going to be going on a short break. Going to be going on a short break uh, when we return the Grand Finals. See you soon. ZVZ, ZVZ. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and welcome to Battle for America. It is I, Milk and Cookies. Ha, psych! I'm the host today, not Light. I'm here joined by Light, actually. I had no idea you were counting down. I thought we were still going through that whole, like, oh, you need permission from Darking? So I was just like, oh. And I heard your mic beep, and I was like, oh, crap. He undefinite and unmuted himself. Uh. What do you want? I asked you if you're ready. And you're like, yes. I was sir. ready, and yeah. then you didn't... You did a countdown right I away, so I was like, down. and then you left. I was like, all right, because he left. Like, we're uh, waiting. <laughs> and I was like, uh. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> no, no, they got to pick up and go. These medevacs are gonna get cleaned up. Oh, yeah, everything's gonna be going down. The Marauder gets sent down and it's running away because it can't shoot up. Get home, buddy. Get home. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you oh, running? Can he escape? Why are you running? Stalker's like, where's that fucking marauder? <laughs> Come look, here. Look at his legs go. Oh no, this is the right <laughs> oh, 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 unfortunate. Yeah, literally any damage right now for patients is going to be incredible. Huh. <laughs> is patients trying to convert the building? <laughs> <laughs> what is you know, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Let's see what happens. No. Literally nothing. Oh, God damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And you know what that means? Kuro, come here and do the Spanish intro. That means Kuro needs to jump in. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll go back to watching Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you frozen again? No, I was just kidding. Oh my god. Um. Drop.
So I am not doing Spanish. You are doing yeah. the Spanish intro. Mel, it's your fault. Spanish. You got played did, into it. All right. I did like three times the Spanish. I, I did it like three times. This is your turn. Listen, I'm not doing listen. a Spanish intro. I don't control it, okay? The people control it. All right. It's not my fault that you just happened to activate Vortex's trap card. All right. You played into his hands. He looked at you dead in the eye. He's like, oh, yeah? Spanish intro, huh? <laughs> Look what I got right here. <laughs> Curry, he's got you there. It's your fault, really. Like. It's you know boring. That, you know you know what I that do it means? Like every you just, time you I just need more people to, uh, you better, you just need more people to contribute before, you know, someone gets 16k, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it, it, you know what, Curry, he's not wrong. Like, you, you, you're the one who spent the points on the Spanish intro. You should have waited for okay, Vortex. You should have waited. You should have waited. Now you say that, but when you and the other cast, you're like, no, we're going to do it for the finals. We can wait. But when I can, oh, suddenly. <laughs> It was change. Five minutes later. Pack the wings, so he was forced to look at it, and he throws out the spores. Oh no, he's not, he's not surrounding it properly. Oh no, this is gonna get sniped. That's it. The GG, just like that. <laughs> GG, I'm done. I'm out. Bye. Uh, not like this. Oh god. F's in the chat. Five minutes, forty seconds. Uh, GG. There you go, Vortex. That's what you get. I bet the Spanish no. intro would have been longer than the game, let's be honest. <laughs> it would have. It would be. But uh, also, I don't think it's, you know, I can do the Spanish intro every cast, come on. That's what he wants. That's what the chat but, wants. Yeah, you know what? But That's... it's boring because I say the same things. Bring her out. If, look, if I'm getting a crew please again, and you somehow make me into making the Spanish intro, Milk is casting with me. <laughs> No, yeah, okay, yeah, we yeah. Can, I'll we do that. Take me down That's this. fine. That's fine. You know what? Hold on, hold on. I wanted to do something. Oh my God! Look at what happened in the oh light VIP. Oh, <laughs> what? Dang! <laughs> light VIP redeemed the crew, please. What happened? How can you do her dirty like that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I need to press exit game as as I saw it in the chat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>welcome back everyone welcome back i hope you enjoyed that duct tape from times gone by as we are now diving in to the grand finals of the sparkling tuna cup number 38 now here we go we're diving right on into game oh my god <laughs> spotting in the bottom right hand corner of oceanborn we have the indian zerg player the best player in all of india representing Matarino esports it is demi <laughs> and sporting in the top left, they good, they they good fans. They they, they were bantering it. <laughs> oh, oh my god, the gloves are coming off, Papi. Oh no! In the top left, we have his opponents. We have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. Let's go. <laughs> They were bantering earlier. They were bantering earlier. Oh, oh no. Not like this. <laughs> it's, it, but India's insane. India's crazy. We, we were speaking. <laughs> we were speaking about this uh, the other day. How um, we were talking about Age, Age of Empires four and how AOE four has servers in India and Demi. He has the power. 
where he lives in the world, uh, in India, he can actually ladder on Korea, ladder on NA, ladder on EU as well with decent ping. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> the world, is, it's bro it's broken, Papi. It's crazy. Him, Papi. Him. India is the place to be uh, in the world of esports when you're laddering and playing against players against all around the world. Decent ping. Henny region. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, oh, is he gonna flex? Oh, no, not quite, not quite. <laughs> uh, as for now, we're getting into our openers so far. Um, De wait, what just happened? Demi took the unnatural natural. I was just, I was just uh, assuming what was going on. Um, yeah, it's a hatch gas pool here. Uh, Eva did not like. There was no pro block or anything like that. I'm very curious as to what the hell's going on. This is this is wild. Eba comes in for a scout. He's gonna see the lack of expansion. Going to assume a one base all in, but really it's an unnatural natural. Like there's no reason for Eba to believe that that there's a hatchery here. He eventually will check. There we go, spines. Spine calls are thrown down. We cancel the creep is revealed. Eba overreacting for a moment, making a wave of lings. Oh, he did fall for the bait. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all as Demi is now going straight for a third base. Getting into a very economic situation. As a reminder, Demi, he's leading the series 1-0. to zero. I forgot to throw this down. Predictions are open. I believe they're closed by the time you hear this message. Oh. Predictions. Did you post in the chat? But uh, yes, yeah, some good mind games. Good mind games here out of Demi. Eba forced to produce and then cancel a couple of buildings, lost mining time, made extra lings, and now he is going to be moving out. Trying to see what he can get done. Now, Demi is split between the bases. He is split between them. Eba going to be slipping into the main as well. There we go. 14 more links in production. Bailing. Ness is about to finish up. Eba about to be hyper aggressive here with Ling Bane. Demi, he's going to have a hard time keeping up here, protecting both his main and his natural. We'll see if he can. As he does, he does come across some links. Does shut them down. Here we go. Eba just going to be sending it across the map. Everything that he has. Bailings are on the way for them. They do morph in. And they're waddling in from behind. Oh, Demi getting out of position. <laughs> Taking a bailing to the face. But he has his own bailings waddling in as well. They're going to be forcing Eba back. For the moment, for the time being. He can't waste them. Oh. Oh, my God. As Demi does overextend for a moment there. It doesn't quite detonate. I muted because I see he's got a massive connection there with Lings. They go down and Demi's in a lot of trouble. Demi racing across the map. Eva's chasing and Bailey's going to be waddling on in. Good splits here out of Eva. So far, good control. Yeah, we're down to two Bailings. Meanwhile, Demi gets cleaned up across the map. He does manage to get it. Oh my god, he snuck a couple of Lings in. I don't know how. Queen does fall. Do you see Demi trying to trade here with the Bailings of his opponents? But Eva, I don't think he's ready in his main. I don't think he's ready for this. The Bailings are going to be one thing on in. The Bailings go down. Eva's going to get cleaned up. But now Demi, can, yeah, he can focus in the main base of his opponent. Diving on in. The Bailings, they crash on forward. Uh, not the best connections. But five workers go down. Uh, meanwhile, Eva does bust into the main. He may have lost five workers, but he's going to get so much more. Getting six. Uh, a little bit more. Gets six workers. Takes down the queen as well. Demi, though. Yeah. Now falling behind. Oh. <laughs> Demi has fallen behind, and now he has to rush across the map. He's down to 21 workers compared to the 27 of Eba. Bailings are on the way in the main base. Oh, the bait! Oh my god. Is Demi, is he looking? He's not looking! Not paying attention. Another five workers go down. Demi, his economy is crippled. At this point, he is completely all in. 
Ah, but Eva, he is more than ready for this. Four more Bailings waddling in from the flank. We trade two for two. Oh, I don't. <laughs> you don't quite trade here either. Bailings, they go down. Demi running out of steam. He's down 14 drones. There was a strong moment this game for Demi, but not anymore. Roach is now in production for Eva. Demi's keeping up, but oh no! <laughs> Massive connection! Eva, he, uh, sorry, Demi takes one to the face. Not like this. And GG gets called, and Eva will tie the series one to one. We have a series, we have a back and forth. GG. GG, well played. Oh my god, that was a, yeah, a wild start to the game where Demi did take the unnatural natural, trying to fake out his opponents, was eventually scouted, and Eva was able to confirm what was going on. And uh, with that, Eva able to just ramp up the aggression, was able to out-control Demi in the Ling Bane Wars. Demi had his moments, don't get me wrong, but uh, the Bailings in the main base of, of Eva, they were a little bit lackluster, only killing five workers. I feel like there was potential for maybe even more damage there. Um, but Demi was cleaned up, and yeah, Eva able to just snowball out of control. GG, well played. And with that, we're getting ready for game number two. Now, again, because Demi came from the upper bracket, he's already up 1-0. Or he started the series with a 1-0 lead, which is why we are tied up. And, yeah, this can still go either direction. That's the five. Plenty of games to come. At least two more. At least. Hopefully more than that. Hopefully. So we're getting into game number two. Going to be on Site Delta. We go. And spawning in the top left hand corner of Side Delta, we have the Indian Zerg player representing Machirino Esports. It is Demi. Oh my god, oh, let's go. <laughs> Going for a 12 pool. And spawning in the bottom right, we have his opponent. We have the English Zerg player representing the Platinum Heroes, tying up the series one to one, getting 12 pooled. It is. Eva. Here we go. And the question becomes, how committed are we going to be with this 12 pool? As we are going to be getting a couple of extra drones in the mix. Now, you can go for a 12 pool drone pool. Or just go for a 12 pool opener into an expansion back at home. A little bit less committed. We have options. We do have options available here for Demi. As Eba is going for a hatch gas pool, standard economic opener out of Eba. Again, far more aggressive from Demi. Ah, uh, he's pulling the boys. Uh, we should have seen a natural base by this point, and we have not thrown one down. So, oh no, never mind. Okay, we are expanding. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this expansion is going to be a little bit late because the drone arrives a little bit late as well. But it looks like we will be expanding in the end. And throwing down that natural. Okay, so it's just a 12 full opener. The way that this works is that Demi is going to be looking for some drone damage. He's looking to kill some workers here at the natural, deny mining time, and get ahead economically. Now, the downside here is that there's no gas. No gas for Demi. It's going to be very delayed. As a result, Demi is going to be getting into two base play, which makes a lot of sense on this map. Side Delta is one of the few maps in this map pool that has a ramp coming into the natural. So having that as an added defensive bonus here makes sense if you want to be playing two base. Links have arrived. They get some damage done. Boys are being pulled. Eva cannot lose this natural base. Which is why Demi is looking for drone kills. So far, the drone drilling not looking too bad. We get a couple of hits in on the lings. We haven't lost anything yet. Eva pres oh god, preserving his uh, trying to preserve his drones, but he loses one. He does lose one worker, and he has to be very careful not to lose any more. And good drone drilling overall, and Demi is going to be forced back. Up, oh. is going to be forced back for a moment. Yeah, we have plenty of links here. This is not the fight that, Eva, that Demi can take. Eva, yeah, snowballing out of control. He cleans up whatever he can, and Demi's forced back. He's down one worker. 
Uh, we're getting even here as Eba throws down the spine crawler, being very safe. Very paranoid. Very paranoid here, but he is going to be safe and sound with that spine. Eba going for a counter attack. Demi, though, in position with his queens. Again, still no gases. He should be walling off and just droning. Now, again, the downside for what Demi is doing is that he is going to be contained to two bases. He will have a really hard time expanding and taking a third anytime soon, which is why Eba should be taking advantage of this situation and taking his own third base. Sling speed is on the way. Drones are in production as well. And we're settling into the mid game. The wall for Demi is commencing. And the third for Eba is on the way. So Eba's going to have a better economy. Demi is going to have a higher tech army in a way. Because Demi is skipping link speed. Because we opened up 12 full, which is like a gasless opener, essentially. So we're skipping link speed, going straight into roaches. We could technically try and go to base fire. That is also possible. Uh, but there's no fast layer. And uh, we aren't taking additional gases. So again, should just be two base roach. Now, Demi, he can either go into a two base all in from here. Or he can just make enough roaches to take a third and get into a longer game. And just skip the Ling Bane portion and get into roach v roach. Speaking of, Eba getting his own Roach Warren, heavily droning, taking his own gases. And, oh, Demi starts up Link Speed. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. Link Speed is on the way. This is huge. Demi's going for a Link Flood. So, basically, he's faking Roaches. He's faking two base Roach when really he's going into a lair, massing Lings. And with this lair, he could even try to go into Mutas as well. Um, Carapace is on the way. Curious what this layer is going to be for. It could just be Roach Speed, but we are just amassing nothing but Lings. And Eba, because he knows it should be two base Roach, Eba doesn't have a Bailing Nest, which makes sense. You want to be cutting Bailings, going straight into Roaches. Overlord is zoned away, and we are just banking up Lings for the Flood. And here we go. Link Speed is kicking in, and Demi sending everything across the map. He has been spotted. Demi, he's up in Lings, and Eba has to race back home here. He has a couple of roaches coming out. He should be able to defend. He should be okay. Yeah, Demi, he was trying to catch Eba being too greedy, but Eba has plenty of army supply. And this is hurting Demi now. This is actually really dire for Demi. He's, he invested so much into these Lings, and they haven't done anything. Eba's keeping up. Going for his own counter-attack. Roach speed is on the way. Demi now getting into a 1-1 Roach timing. But this third base may be cancelled as Demi has to come back home. So Eva's got a better economy. Working on his upgrades. Lings a dive on top of this. Demi's in position. Going to be able to hold on to his third. The third base is saved. And we are getting into Roach v. Roach. At least Demi preserved his Lings. He did save them. Did save his Lings, but alas. It's not really about the Lings, not anymore. Eva's is droning. So is Demi. Eva has had better saturation for longer. Um, Eva is going to be slightly behind in upgrades. Plus, oh sorry, 1-1 one, one is going to be done faster for Demi. So that is an advantage that he has. There's a timing that he has available. Not the strongest one, though. As Demi does catch a couple of links. Not bad. A couple of links will go down. Likewise, Eva just building up his roach count. Demi, are we cutting workers? We have five more over... Oh, my... Eight? Eight more overlords on the way. And I don't think Demi intends on saturating this third base. Yeah, we're making nothing but roaches. But so is Eva. And Eva has the better economy. He's at 54 workers sending everything across the map. And Demi is trying to catch up. Making roaches. Looking at the Unisab here. Demi, we're even in roaches. 
Demi ahead in upgrades. We're diving on this. Can Demi take a fight? The links are reinforcing Biles. They're forcing Micro out of Demi as well. Uh, the Biles of Demi not quite connecting either. With reinforcements, I believe Demi should be able to barely hold on, but... Yeah, there we go. The concave is too good, and Eva has to back off. Demi holds. Demi does barely hold on. And he had the slightly better upgrades. Demi, he's droning behind this. Making another nine workers. And likewise, so is Eva. The game is going to be calming down. <laughs> We're going to be calming things down from here. Eva going straight for the Spire. Demi going for plus two. Ooh, Eva going to be in the driver's seat here. Rushing into those meters. Meanwhile, Demi going for Overlord Speed. That's a bit of a tell. Dropper Lords are going to be online soon for Demi. Dropper Lords, they could change everything. They could change it all. As both players are just saturating their third bases. Getting it all up and running. Eva is going to be pushing, but I'm pretty sure he's just posturing. Like, he's still building up his bank, his gas, his minerals, spires on the way. He's revealing his army to these roaches, and he's forcing Demi to make roaches as well. He's forcing a reaction out of Demi. Eva. Again, he doesn't really intend on committing. He's just clearing up creep. Eva is not pushing in anytime soon. He's waiting for the spire, waiting for mutants. So again, just a really good fake out out of Eva. He was just puffing up his chest. He was just faking out his opponent and Demi he fell for it. And now Demi is about to max out. And sure, he can push with Roach Ravager, but he can't shoot up. Biles are all that he really has. And these mutants are going to force an all-in or they're going to force an attack out of our Zerg player. Out of Demi. And here it is. Demi is pushing. Mutants have been revealed. Can Eva hold on? Can he keep up as the Overseer gets a full scout of the natural, soon to be the main as well? Muta's going to be chasing it down, and here we go, Demi pushing forward. Burrow, Tunneling Claws, Hydra Den on the way. We're diving on the army. Good dodges out of Eva. And you can see the mutas, they just go ham on the army. Demi has to pull back and he's bleeding out so much. Oof. Overlords, overlords are going down. Demi just relinquishing map control. Uh, Eva, he can't like dive into mineral lines and kill workers. Not yet. The muta count isn't quite high enough for that. Bailey nests on the way. Oh my. Okay, Eva, it looks like he wants to transition out of Roaches and straight into Mutaling, Mutaling Bane. Interesting, yeah, plus one melee is on the way. The era of the Roaches has come and gone. Eva going to be checking the fourth base. Spore getting what's on the Hydras do come out just in time. They take down one of the mutas. One muta does go down. Demi working towards a Lunker Den as well. It's a Hydra Lunker Viper on the way for Demi. Oh my god. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Tunneling Claw Roaches have been spotted. Eva going for his own Roach counter attack. 25 Bailings on the left. That's a lot of Bailings. A lot of bailings here for Eva. So the way this works is that the bailings ideally want to get on top of the hydras. They want to try to get walk past those roaches, get on top of the hydras. And with the death of those hydras, that's going to be the death of the anti-air. Lurker then just now finishing. No lurkers. Demi's maxed. Three infestors are in production, but they're not out yet. 
we are diving on this army. The Bathers are rolling in. Again, they're trying to go straight for the Hydras. They will get on top of some of them. The Hydras are going down. And the Roach Ravager army just collapses here on Demi. Demi losing far too much ground. At the same time, he does counterattack. He's going to get a couple of workers. The Muters, they're, rushing, they're racing back home. But Eva's ground army is breaking through. He takes down the army, gets into the third base. Both players are losing workers, but Eva has a standing army. The Infestor doll. We get a fungal. We get two fungals. Was it worth it? I, it should be. That's 15 workers going down. The economy of Demi uh, in the gutter. Not like this. As Demi is being forced back here, come the reinforcements. At the same time, Demi is going for some borrowed roach harass, uh, which could do a lot of damage. The token swarm host. No, get out of here. You don't die, ah, no. <laughs> Does get a locust wave out. But Demi, he has lost almost everything here. We have a couple of hydras and roaches in production. But there's just too much momentum going Eba's way. Too much for the boozer. GG gets called, and Eva will take a 2 1 lead in this series on match point. GG. Again, Eva doing a great job at just taking up, hiding, of course, his muta transition, his muta switch, giving him just so much control throughout that game. Able to get into that Roach Ravager, a counterattack as well. And uh, yeah, those mutas, they just gave him so much breathing room, so much freedom in this series. Demi just could not keep up. Again, the scout was a little bit late there. And uh, he was already maxed out at the time. Just a little bit too late to get into those hydras. Into the, um, no lurkers at all either, unfortunately. Demi, he was working on that kind of late game army composition. Couldn't quite get there. And with that, Iba, he only needs one more. Uno mas to take it all to become this week's Sparkling Tuna Cup champion. Demi needs to win this game to force the ace match. Now, as a reminder, there was a lot that came into this game. Initially, Demi went for a Ling Flood. Didn't work. Uh, so he had a really hard... He had a much harder time getting into the mid game. Much more harder than Eva, for example. Uh, there was that push where Eva did overextend, but it was okay. He was just you know, giving himself some breathing room for the eventual muters. And the muters, they did so much just forcing Demi back. Forcing a, a reaction, of course. A tech switch. GG. GG, well played. And here we go. Potentially the final game. And the pressure is on. The pressure is on Demi to fight back. Let's go. As our next game is on, Golden Aura. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have our Indian Zerg player, the Red Zerg, representing Matarino Esports. Down in the series, but not out. It is Demi. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent going for a 12. Let's go, going for a 12 pool representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Eva. Let's go. The 12 pool is upon us. Now, the last time we saw a 12 pool out of Eva, it was a 12 pool drone pool. This time, oh, drone is moving out. Where are we? We're going for the gold. Where are we going? Oh, we're going across the map. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wait, is this a 12 full proxy hatch? No shot. In ZVZ? Uh, we've seen 12 full drone pools today. We've seen just 12 full into a macro opener. 12 full proxy hatch is typically reserved for versus Protoss. But we're doing this against Zerg, which is not something that I'm too familiar with. But, uh, okay. Uh, all right show us what you got <laughs> so with this proxy hatchery we can reinforce that much faster to keep the pressure up we could even try to spread creepy oh okay i see it is an extractor trick this makes a lot more sense it's been a while been a while 
We are going for that spine crawler. So the way this works, you throw down the hatchery, you cancel the hatchery, and it leaves a patch of creep. And if you're fast enough, you can actually throw down a building, like an Eva chamber or a spine crawler. So it's going to be a spine rush here from Eva. The goal here, to kill the natural, to kill workers as well. Eva is expanding behind this. He's not all in, but he's looking to get ahead. As Eva is droning, Ling's going to be on top of that hatchery. Boys are being pulled. That spine crawler is on the way. We don't want to get surrounded. Uh, as Demi does end up sacking his workers here at the third base, but the spine crawler is on the way. Demi, he has to respond. He has to react. He has to dive on this spine. He cannot let it finish, but one drone is going to go down. Two workers even. Links are on the way, but the spine finishes. Not like this. The spine crawler is done, and drones are going to be going down. And big pickoffs, full workers, and we take control of the natural. And Demi's in a dire position. The queen comes out. But the spine crawler is within range, and the queen will fall. The control out of Eba. Pulling back. This is going to be dealt with. But Eba, he takes an economic lead. Has a gas geyser on the way. Not quite as fast as. Demi here as Demi can get into link speed and we're in a really interesting position <laughs> we are in an interesting position here now Eva traded well he did trade well but he's behind when it comes to gas mining that's because of the 12 pool um is actually one worker behind in drones as well again he was hoping for more damage he was hoping to get more done Links of Demi going to be threatening a dive into the main base. Uh, they get a scout, but not much else. They do get eyes on the gas geyser at least. And here we go from here. Again, Eva just going to be throwing down his own spine crawler, taking his gases as well. Oh, going for an extractor trick? Never mind. Just breaking free from the supply block. And we are settling into this. Now, with this fast layer, we can go in a couple of different directions. If we take additional gases, we can go to base Spire. Uh, if we don't take additional gases, we can just throw down the Roach one and go to base Roach, which should be what we work on next. Eva, sorry, Demi likewise getting into his own layer timing. Slightly slower than that of Eva's. And we'll see what kind of direction we want to go in. Okay, this time the gases are being taken for real. Plus one range is on the way, so it is going to be roaches from Eva. We're not playing around with any kind of crazy Mew to play. Not this time. And Demi shouldn't be too far behind. Um, he's just taking all of his gases. He's droning. Saturating everything he can. The game will settle from here. Now, link speed is going to be an interesting one. Uh, interesting one, of course. Eva doesn't have link speed. Demi could try to link flood again, and he does cancel. Oh my god, uh, Demi! Are we going to base spire? I was. We were theorizing that maybe Eva would go to base spire, but no, it's going to be Demi instead. This is crazy. Um, this is almost illegal. Like, I, okay, so there's a lot happening. Um. One, he knows that Eva's playing two base. Roach speed is on the way, plus on range as well. Eva should hit first. The Spire just now started. This is just really risky, really greedy out of Demi. Now a third base is on the way. Link speed is done, but he canceled the Roach one, so we won't have any. And now the Roach one's on the way, but we won't have any defensive Roaches in time for this attack. The wall is being thrown down. And Eva's going to be pushing. Queens are coming, Roaches as well. Demi's in a lot of trouble. We need Spines. We need a wall of spine crawlers. And we just don't have the money for it. And here we go, Eba. Gonna be sending everything he has across the map, including the queens. We have one to inject each base, but everything else, it's coming. And no spines, only lings! Ay ay ay. I mean, Demi is gonna have access to roaches at least once the nope, never mind. We do get a cancel, we do get a surround even! First roach is surrounded. Bit of an overextension out of Eva. 
At the same time, Demi going for a big counterattack. Eba, he doesn't take the bait. He doesn't turn around. We have a full wall off back at home. Demi trying to buy time. Seven, nine. Oh, God. Nine meters on the way. The surround comes in. We get the queen. Queen does go down. Demi, he is busting into the natural base. Sorry, Eba's busting into the natural base. Bile's going to be there. Oh, my God. They almost take down the overlords. Good positioning out of Eba. Taking down a lot of legs. They get into the mineral line as well. Uh, the legs will be cleaned up, but these mutas are getting so much done. Yeah, the Roach Army of Eba will fall. He has seven workers in total. Eba does take a worker lead. But back at home, Hydrogen's on the way. Just now finished. It's going to take a while for Eba to really have much anti air. Demi has map control. He made it. He lived. He survived. He's got 12 muters. And he's going to shut down every single one of these overlords. It's three overlords going down. We should be able to get a fourth as well. Eba getting supply blocked. Working towards roach, oh, tunneling claw roaches. Which has been spotted. Demi rotating into the main, uh, being zoned away. But he's just doubling down on roaches. We have a plus one air attack. Eba now working towards the infestation pit for infestors or even vipers for hive. Um, it's still a ways away though, and, and I, I, I have to give the edge to Demi. I have to give the edge to him. Up in bases, up in workers. There's a lot of potential with these muters as well. And they're going to get two drones before a, before a muter does go down. And again, every worker counts. Can even find a changeling. Hydras are in position. Demi will have to respect it. And remember, Tarleen Claws is done. Borrow is still on the way. Unfortunately, it looks like Borrow was forgotten a little bit. There it is. Lurker, Lurker Den. I almost said Lurker Cavern. <laughs> Essentially, Eba's turtling. Eba, he's stuck at home. He shouldn't be pushing anytime soon, especially with Lurkers on the way, with the Invasion Bit, with Hive, Vipers, so much tech. Eba is just stuck turtling and... Demi, with the map control, he's free to expand. He's free to just run away with this economically. But also, Demi should be teching as well. So, typically, once you get map control with these muters, you want to be working on Hydro Lurker Viper yourself. Demi isn't, which means the quality of the army for Eva is getting better and better. Um, Demi's on a timer. He's on a timer. He needs to kill and cripple Eba sooner rather than later. Because otherwise, if he waits too long, Eba will have Hydro Lurker Viper, which is just a superior army composition to what Demi has. Here we go, Demi. He dives into the main. Gets a gas geyser. The fungal! Oh, big fungal on the army, but only a single fungal, and most muters will escape. As Eba's going for a counterattack. Again, a lot of pressure is still on Eba. Uh, there is detection. The Roaches are going to get a couple of drones. They're going to get one, maybe two. And two workers. That's it's something. It is something. That is infestors. Lurkers on the way. More Tulling Claw Roaches coming in from behind. Demi up to 80 workers. He's running away with this. With an insane economy. Things they come in for a surround. The Roaches, good target firing here. They get six more drones. But Demi, he reciprocates that damage by getting a gas geyser. You know, 
know, Demi working on his own hive. This should be for vipers. Or even we could just go ultras. That's the yeah, that's the other logical uh tech path here for Demi. Is Ling Bane Muta into Ultras. Just to make use of all these melee upgrades. Until then, Eva still just stuck at home. He's just stuck at home until he maxes. Hive about to finish up. Once we get the Hive, we can get Vipers. And once we get Vipers, then Eva can be active. It'll, all it takes is like two good Parasitic Bombs and these Muters will all die. They will not make it alive. Eva getting a fourth. Just trying to keep up with the meters. There's that ultra cabin that we were talking about. The meters get a cancel. Do get a cancel on that hatchery. Eva still stuck at home. That's a decent army. There are the first couple of vipers on the way. Now I am concerned. Um, ultras, well upgraded ultras, they can just have their way with these hydras. But I'm curious how we approach this. As for now, the Vipers are gathering up energy. Um, with the arrival of these Vipers, these Mutas, they shouldn't be too... They shouldn't be long for this world. Uh, they shouldn't be too prevalent anymore. Just because Power Bombs just completely shut Mutas down. But as we get out of Mutas, we should be getting into Ultras. But ultras and vipers as well. From Demi. Till then, lurkers are getting in position. Demi making five ultras at a time. Nidus Swarm is on the way to reinforce and get across the map. Demi still with an insane economy, just mass expanding all over the map. And here we go. Here comes the first push. We spoke about the vipers. We have three of them full of energy. And with the good blinding clouds or even abductions, yoinks. Demi, he can't break this position. A lot of overseers. Nice into the main is going to be spotted. Has been seen here by Eva. Tries to rotate into the main base. Mutas are going down at the same time. Here come the Ultras. Decent blinding clouds. Oh my god, the Spore is going to be zoning those, those Vipers away. The Ultras get cleaned up. So did the Mutas. Oh, the Bailings, no! Oh my god, if it wasn't for the Bailings, nine drones go down! <laughs> Eba, he was defending well for the most part. He did clean up so many of those meters. Have a look. 15 meters did go down. There are six meters left, barely, in the main base, outside the main. Vipers escape. That's a lot of Vipers. Oh my god. Seven Vipers here for Demi. He's just doubling down here on Mass Ultra. Meanwhile, Eba should be doubling down on Mass Lurker. Sim City's on the way. Yeah, Eba, he's just turtling up and maxing out. And because Eba has a lower worker count, he will have a super maxed army as well. If he stays on the low worker count. But this is still anyone's game. Like, that's a lot of Vipers. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot of Vipers. Nidus into the main. Eba's in position. The rest of the Hydras are rotating over as well. Demi trying to take the gold. Oh my god. How many lurkers do we have? 21. 20. How do we push into 20? We don't. We, we can't push into 21 lurkers. Not like this. Even with blinding clouds, um, I mean, if we blinding cloud everything, then maybe it, that is seven vipers. It's possible. It's possible. Remember, we can still abduct. I 
Reapers are going to be shocking around. We get nervous here. As something. But Demi out positions his opponent. He's going to be able to dive on top of this fresh mining base. Hatchery is cancelled. Vipers are on the way. God, but look at how many... Like, we just can't push in. It's just not happening. 28 lurkers. Now, it, it's, it is still 7 vipers, so... Technically, we could blinding cloud every single lurker if they all bunch up, and it's it's possible, and we're going for it. Oh my god, we can't push into a choke point though. Not against all these lunkers, and here we go. Eba's maxed out. He's pushing. He is super max, only at 65 workers, 64 even. Here come the vipers. So far, massive bungles on the army. Blinding clouds as well, but the lurkers are repositioning. The blinding clouds once again. But it looks like it's too much the lurkers. They just go ham on this army. They are the superior anti-ground force. And Demi backs off. He survives with two ultras remaining. This was not the fight to take. Ay ay ay. The lurkers, they just went to town. And this may just be it because we are camping the production. Demi's remaxing, but he needs time. He needs time to consolidate his army. Seven more ultras on the way. And Eba, he takes down a hatchery. He is looking to take down the natural. He's making his way towards that natural base. We do see Demi trying to go for a, oh no, trying to set up a surround. Surround is upon us so far. Good spread. Do we have any vipers left? We do. We have a couple of vipers remaining. That's a lot of investors. And here we go. Demi collapsing on this army from multiple angles. Good blinding clouds. And Demi, he's breaking through is barely breaking through the ultras are so beefy good abductions decent blind sorry decent power bombs power bombs fungal growths even the three ultras barely make it through and eva he lost everything he initially had a really good trade back at home but this was an overextension he needed more time needed more lurkers and now demi ah, going for a big counter attack Yeah, the lurker count just was not quite, barely not quite there for Eva. But this is still so close. The ultras, they're so expensive. Two of them go down. Two of the ultras do go down. This Ling run by here gets two of the lurkers. Uh, it doesn't quite get two. So sorry, doesn't quite get the third. Two lurkers nonetheless. Jamie going to be threatening a push. Five more Ultras on the way. The Vipers are still alive. These Vipers have been the MVPs. Like, they're constant blinding clouds. The constant spells here from the Vipers. Uh, without them, we're pushing in into a concave. Oh, this is not a good trade. One, two, almost three Ultras. An expensive loss there for Demi. Demi's up 40 supply. Demi at the same time. Ah, oh, we have a bit of harassment here. Trying the gold. This is the other big thing. Demi, he's max expanding. He's taking every other base on the entire map. Just snowballing out of control of the economy. He may have taken some rough trades, but Demi, he's remaxing, and Eva is not. That is what matters. That is all that matters here, as Demi is still maxed. Eva, he needs time. Oh my god. As, uh, he's at least doing some counter damage. God, lurkers here are, are two of the free trades. At those, oh my god, at those stream bases. We have roaches here counterattacking as well. So many mineral lines under threat. Here comes the detection. Eva finally getting cleaned up, but he's getting so much done. Ten workers go down. Eva actually taking an economic lead. But Demi has a supply. Demi has how many ultras? Eleven! <laughs> Eleven ultras for Demi. Parabomb connects. 
Transfuse. Yeah. We do transfuse a Demi is spread thin. Demi, he may have mass expanded, but his bases are so spread out that he just can barely defend. 14 versions in total. Good SimCity. No, the Lurkers, they get caught out. Lurkers are caught out. Two of them go down. One escapes. But Eba is turtling. He takes a new base. His economy is good enough. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Changelings go down. And here we go. Demi dives in. How good are the blinding clouds? And so far, they cover almost every lurker. They have to reposition. Good movement here out of Eba, pulling back. More blinding clouds all over the place, but Eba, good kiting. And he comes forward here with the lurkers. Base will fall. It's an expensive trade for Demi. Eba did lose the hatchery, but you can see Demi pretty close in army supply now. He did lose. Oh, Demi lost every one of his Vipers. He has to rebuild from scratch. Demi still has a better economy, though. The goal base putting in a lot of work. Coming in clutch. That one we're still going in. <laughs> Still going ham here over on the left hand side. Eba coming in for some harass. There is detection though, so yeah, Debbie's not too far behind. He should be able to keep up. One lurker out of range of the sword. Oh, we come in too close. Yeah, a little bit too close there. Lurker is going to go down. But towards the top. <laughs> We're getting some drones. Oh, Eba, he hasn't seen the right inside. He doesn't know. Pretty important mining base here for Demi, but Eba, he hasn't scouted. Otherwise, he 100% would have gone for this base. As Eba is just reestablishing himself, turtling up. God, just mass harassing here. Getting 11 drones. Eva doing surprisingly well. And you can see that he's getting ready here to receive another attack. With all his SimCity spores, Eva chambers. Now, unfortunately, this means that he can't quite do much about these fringe bases of Demi. At least on the right-hand side. So Eva, he's stuck at home, just turtling. And I love this out of Demi. He's not resting on his laurels. We have plus three air attack on the way. And Broodlords. And Broodlords, they are the day on the coffin. There's very limited anti-air. What can be done about the Broodlords? Not much. Not too much. The armies are going to be repositioning. They'll be moving out on the right-hand side. More Broodlords are on the way, and Eba doesn't know. He doesn't know that there are Broodlords. He doesn't know that he needs more anti-air. Specifically, more Vipers would help. Just to basically abduct the Broodlords within range of these spores. The Lurker Den! No! Lurker Den is barely not going to go down. Oh my god. The Ling Ramai did not get a kill. Clutch hold. Roach counterattack getting more drones. And we have not revealed the, the Broodlords. Not yet. Eba still does not know. I mean, loss up would be interesting. Uh, Demi has lost 326 links, <laughs> 28 ultras, 12 vipers. So overall, we can see here that Eva has been more efficient with his trades. Um, he has been more efficient, but Demi is still mining more. And Eva finally sees the base. He just tried to expand. Now he knows that Demi has every other hatchery on the map. How many joys have gone down? 52. Two workers. 
when it comes to gas, pretty even trades. Um, Demi losing slightly more gas, but only slightly. Losing far more minerals. But again, what matters is the economy. The economic situation here for Demi is just insanely good. And over time, Demi should be able to build up this bank, trade, remax, and trade again. Hydras are pushing, but the Ultras are not too far behind. Yeah, even it's gonna get the hell out of here. Oh! As he does pull back. Lurkers are repositioning. We need to. Demi gets ready to push in. <laughs> the burrowed. The burrowed hydras. Yeah, the Broodlord count is getting higher and higher. So again, the problem here for Eba is um, Hydra Lurker Viper is like the late game composition you want. Broodlords are, they can be superior as long as they don't get abducted. There are the abductions. One Broodlord going to be going down. The Blinding Clouds, they cover the Hydras and the Broodlords are pushing through. The Ultras, they have a hard time. Can we yoink? We can. We get one. One Broodlord does go down. The Eba chases. <laughs> now again, a lot of the a lot of these fights are gonna come down to the spellcasters, are gonna come down to the vipers. We have five vipers, four Eba, only two for Demi. You see Eba just pushing on forward. Good yoink. Gets a Viper. Here we go. Eba just going to be pushing on ever closer. He has maxed out. Doesn't have a bank, but he's maxed. It looks like Eba, he has broken the space. And now he can take it as his own. Take the space as his own. How many Vipers do we have now? We have six. Six Vipers here for Demi. They're gathering up energy back at home. Again, it's going to be all about the Vipers. Demi and Eba. Hatchery's being taken. Demi is mining out from the goal base. I would love to see Demi throw away these, these mutas. Like, they've served their purpose. So, not that important anymore. Plus two carapace on the way. The fact that Eba has taken another base it is a pretty crucial moment here. Demi, he's just amassing his army, waiting to push in. Here we go. We are going for it. How many lurkers? 17 lurkers. Blinding clouds are thrown down. Ah, oh, but the ultras, they're going to melt big blinding clouds on the army, though. The ultras are getting on top of the lurkers. Down to 11. The Brewlords do back up. Bearing in mind that none of the Brewlords did fall. The Hydras, they keep pushing. We got one Brewlord. Three Brutalos in total, and now Eba is going for a big counterattack. I do love this. This does force Demi to react and respond. His Brutalos is not in position. And GG is going to get called as Demi gets caught out. He had a bank, but he could not deal with that army. And Eba will take the series 3-1, to one, becoming this week's Sparkling Tuna Cup champion. GG. Oh, my God. <laughs> GG, well played. I do think that Demi was over-investing into those Ultras. We saw that the Ultras, they were having a really hard time really gaining value. And this is the power of Golden Aura. Because the Rush Distance by Ground is so short, you could see 
that Eber's counterattack took a couple of seconds. It didn't take too long at all for him to move across the map. And the Brulers, because they're so slow, they were caught out of position. They weren't killed, but they couldn't keep up. They couldn't keep up, which meant that Eber, he could kill a base, and then another base, and then another base. And what was important is the maneuverability, the mobility here of Eber's army oh, was able to outposition and slow and steady wins the race. You know, just a very, very defensive style there out of Eber. I say defensive. Mate, I was impressed by the fact that even though Demi was mining from every single base on the map, Eber, he was harassing so well. Like, Roaches at the third. Um, we had Lurkers at the fringe bases. Bottom left, top right as well. Uh, Demi, he got away with a base that was mining and was not scouted, but didn't even matter. Did not even matter. Eber was just all over the map all over the place gg well played eba doesn't drop a single game here in the finals uh demi started with a 1-0 lead but eba takes it all the way gg well played oh. <laughs> gg gg i'm messaging eba <laughs> he was telling me. He's like, I was so dead. <laughs> Eva, he's like, mate, how did I win that game? It was over, Bobby. It was over. Giga dead, Bobby. Giga dead. Uh, the comeback was real. Oh my god. GG, well played, and yeah, even even he was telling me that he didn't believe. He didn't believe, Papi. Uh, did not believe, but yeah, was just all over it. Did have the better army control in the end. I what um I feel like a really pivotal moment actually. If you remember, it was when Eba was defending his fifth base. It was his fifth base on the low ground where uh where Eba was able to avoid the blinding clouds and able to kite back with his lurkers. Um, so well, trading so well against the Ultras, and yeah, GG, well played. Evil was able to persevere and able to win it in the end. Congratulations, and he is going to be our Sparkling Tuna Cup champion. GG, well played. Uh, a bit of a shorter Sp Sparkling Tuna Cup this week. Uh, again, it was a smaller bracket overall. It was a smaller bracket in the end. But it uh, was a shorter bracket, but a sweet one, a beautiful one here. We had Demi, Eba, shout out to Rostock, Mino VK, Spiffy B, and Oriana for all being a part of this. GG. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be back here in two weeks. Uh, for those wondering, this is a bi-weekly tournament open to all regions, bringing everyone together. And, you know, we have been on a bit of a hiatus because of ESL Masters, but now that, of course, the playoff bracket of ESL Master is, is wrapping up. Now that we're done with the B stream, we can now focus on our own tournaments again, and hopefully we can we can bring our players back uh, or bring our regulars back um, week after week. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we're going to be back soon. Soon, TM. We're going to be back in 45 minutes. We don't have much time at all. <laughs> Eva's message. He's like, I, I'm shocked that I was able to make it to the hive. To be honest, like it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Ah, it's the Eva. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be back in 45 minutes with World Team League. WTL is gonna be coming up next year on the channel. Um, so stay tuned for that in 45 minutes. Um, until then though, enjoy another Starcraft streamer out there. We're gonna be giving another another streamer a raid. Not too sure who. As we quickly check the directory. Uh, we'll give them a chance. We're gonna be, I'm going to be going on a short break, getting a quick bite to eat, and then we're going to be back with WTL. Oh, so, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. You better be back here in 45 minutes <laughs> for some more StarCraft if you, are, if you are unsatiated. The downside tonight is that WTL is going to be overlapping with ESL Masters. They are going to be overlapping with each other, so multi-twitch it up, you know, open up a couple of tabs, open up a couple of different monitors, and... Uh, yeah, we got you covered with plenty of StarCraft tonight. Um, we missed out on WTL yesterday because I was a little bit too tired. I'm a little bit tired now at the moment as well. I'm going to go and uh, try and get some coffee and splash myself awake. But I will...
be here for WTL. Do not worry. Do not fret. Um, so yeah, going to be going in a short break. When we return, more StarCraft. The stream will be going down at, sorry, I should say, the stream is going to be going down, and we'll be back in like half an hour. Half an hour, probably. Otherwise, you can support us on Patreon or Macharino, exclamation mark commands, exclamation mark socials in the chat to follow us, and we'll see you guys next time. Big shout out to Eva. Big shout out to everyone that participated. Congrat congratulations once again to Eva for, is this his first win? Uh, hold up. Este Eva. The young blood himself. Let me just double check here. Has he won one of these before? Um, Bjorn Art. Never mind. This is his very first win. Congratulations. Congratulations to Eva. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time here for some more Sparkling Tuna Cup. Again, we'll see you guys in 45 minutes for WTL. Until then, hasta luego. Bye. Bye. Hasta luego.